let's open up the meeting. Um, we're going to follow up from the um, the design of the Finance Committee Select Board joint meeting that we started last year um, because we, we felt it was best uh, to meet together. That way, um, all of the boards in town only had to explain their budgets once, but it gave us all a chance to hear one another's issues with that budget at one meeting. Um, so that worked out well. So we're gonna continue that through the rest of this year and uh, hopefully it goes as well. So um, with- um, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Done. Okay. Um, we're gonna start with public safety. Brian, is, is there something, do you wanna do an overview? Yeah, I, I just wanna, give you an update the, the governor filed his budget um, several weeks back so we have the first look at post state aid for FY19 this should be there should be two sheets in your packet um towards the end yeah it looks a little bit better than last year the the state and county estimated charges for FY18 were $137,000 and this year they're $102,000 so there's a decrease there in state and county charges. As we all know, this could change a lot as the budget goes through um, the House, then the Senate, and then quickly the conference committee. So it, it gives us at least a starting point. And so that's on the expense side. On the revenue side, there's also an increase in revenue and local aid. Um, I see the two numbers here. FY 2018, it was um, 648000 and in 2019, it's 696,000. Some of that increase is, can be attributed to a couple of pass-throughs, but there's around a $15,000 increase in there that would go to the town in the form of increased local aid. But there's no guarantee those numbers stay up through the, the budget process. So we'll just wait. So we hold on tight as we go through this. Alrighty. Um, I guess we'll go through um, the budgets individually. Um, I think all, everybody's here. Fire department, please. Uh, we'll start with public safety. Thank goodness the fire department's here. Um, Excuse me, sir. We had a schedule to be on at six o'clock. The water department was going first. I don't want to have to well, sit here. No, according to this schedule. That's what we were told. Your cell. Wait, I, I, gotta be, be I don't somewhere. care. Guys have a <laughs> <meeting>? <laughs> what? You have if you have to be somewhere, we can. Well, we have a regular water meeting now. Oh, get right up here then. Oh, well, then, <laughs> then come, come on right down. Come on down. down. <laughs> we're not going to get in front. I didn't throw you under the clutch. You, you, you were. You will. <laughs> yes, you did, John. <laughs> nice, nice work, John. Uh, <laughs> okay, so hold on. Let me. Let's. Now we're going to. Now we're going to find the water. Underwater. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Water, water. Everything's here. All right, I get it. Oh, they're in alphabetical order, so one is the water. Is that bad? Yeah, and the this one is. All right, that's fine. Oh, we just got the gray one. We just got the gray one. We don't have my sauce. So you're basically going to speak to this. You, yeah, you, you want me to go over every one or just the one we should be? I just want you to just go through FY19. Tell us why there's a change. All right. So yeah, I just go over one we change. Yeah. All right. Under the salaries, the only thing we changed is we wanted to add $4,000 into an overtime account. So if Either I work more than the 20 hours, or if I use vacation or that, there's money in there to pay Billy or whoever comes in for me. Okay. And then down in the operations, we went up a thousand dollars for the electricity. I think one because the electric rates probably is going to increase, and two, once we get the manganese filters installed. We don't know how much more electricity then things are going to burn. Yep. Then, <clears throat> 
our testing and chemicals, we went down $2,000. Again, once the filters get put in, we'll be using, have to buy a lot less chemicals to treat the water. Our maintenance, we went down a thousand, because again, once the filters go in, there's gonna be a lot of new stuff in there that shouldn't need the upkeep. The engineering, we took off $3,000, because same thing, because the magnet filters, that engineering's just about done. <coughs> The building issues, we knocked it all off because there isn't any. The, we went up $3,500 for the Mill River monitoring. That's next year, this year coming up, we have a payment for looking after the monkey flowers and the muscles. <laughs> Can you say monkey flowers and mussels? Yeah. Okay. Forget okay. The turtles. Uh, that was a good cool. turtles yeah. ended this year. All right. <laughs> All the turtles, <laughs> That's right. The turtles ended this year. Oh, turtles ended this year. <laughs> that was the six grand, and next year it's 9500 for the flowers and the mussels. So. The town has an obligation to continue monitoring the endangered monkey flowers and the endangered uh, the mussels, but I forget yeah. the exact name. For the rest of their yeah. lives or the rest of their Through like 2022. Okay. All right. And then the debt service for the loan of the manganese, we dropped 8000 because we have a lot better, not an exact figure of what it's going to cost, but a closer one, so we won't use the, total, the whole amount. <clears throat> so our operating budget actually went down by almost fourteen grand, but we made that up because there's now two of us taking the health insurance. So that's where that went. Two of you. <laughs> well, there's me taking it, and then we still pay half of the bill. Because he's your backup operator. Because right? yeah. he's retired, right? And he's retired. Yeah, he's, he's retired. retired. He's the got, retirees are 50%. Uh, uh, yeah. I think yeah. two years, three years, or something like that. And we like him. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get that going. <laughs> that's that's good. good. So as a reminder, this, the, the second sheet here, the water department overhead, yeah. that's calculated as a certain percentage of these other line items, of these other budget line items. So those are not, those won't be finalized until those budget line items are known. Okay. Where's the revenue part of this? I can get it, it should be. It will be where it is now. Let's see it. So what? No, I think I don't think we put it on here. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get it now. That has to be the next question though. Huh? How's the enterprise fund doing? Good. Yeah. It's gonna <laughs> then with with the rate straight changes and stuff we're gonna do, it'll be well actually it won't be a lot, but we'll actually put some away. It won't be a huge amount away, but they'll actually put some away finally. So what are the rates that you're looking at proposing for changing? <clears throat> Nothing that's really gonna hurt everything. It's just stuff now, I mean, talking with other towns, like now the water department pays to test everybody's backflow devices, and we're going to go like every other town does. We're going to make whoever owns the device pay to test it. So that's going to drop, usually cost us around four or $5,000 a year. So that'll get put on to them. We're going to start charging for, like every other town, if somebody sells their house, you're gonna to charge to do that final reading instead of doing all that for nothing. And then the water rate's gonna go up a little. We're not quite sure how much yet. Other than that, that's about it for change. So it's really nothing that, besides the water rate going up, that's really the only one that everybody's gonna see. Mm -hmm. so, 
we really need to know what's in that enterprise fund. Well, you need to know what's coming in for revenue yeah. before you can even think about anything that's yeah. on this thing. Yeah, so just, if you, right. you get those numbers, uh, to right. um, because that, like last year, you know, the final decision as to whether or not we were gonna recommend or not recommend really didn't happen to the final meeting that we have. We <coughs> take a look at the budget and what the numbers are and what everybody's wish list is. And then that's when it kind of all comes together. Um, so there's plenty of time, yeah. um, but we really would like to know what the Enterprise Fund has, um, and that'd be, that would be great. Anybody else have any other comments or want to have any questions? In terms of in terms of retained earnings for the Enterprise Fund, it's at uh, sixty-two thousand four hundred eighty-eight dollars. 62488? Yes. Um, I think for the, the, the plan for the for the rate changes would be Wayne Crick if I'm wrong, would be that they would be effective for um, next the first of July. So yeah, it would next be, fiscal year. It would, it would be effective for the July 1st. Okay. My understanding is that rates in this town are, have, have rarely been changed. So, um, well, I guess the, you know, the same rates and all that, I mean, we're, you know, as a town, we're the ones that are responsible. We oversee, you know, the enterprise fund. And one of the big things is to make sure that we have enough in income to support what the expenses are. <coughs> but, you know, as a uh, taxpayer and a lot of people out there, I, I think it'd be tough for somebody to support an increase in rate if we're flush <laughs> on what, what our balance sheet says. So we want to be to charge a rate little? increase. It won't cover your budget. That's what I'm saying. Is that's what we, we yeah, that's, that's what, what we need to know. That's what we need to know. <laughs> and that's what you know. Yeah, all the <laughs> and everybody else are going to want to see right. the same, see yeah. the same thing. Yeah, I'll draw it all out. Yeah. Draw it all because you want us to say yes. Yeah. To the voting public, and we want to go along with what you need, but the numbers have to. Yeah. Got to be there. Hey, right. no problem. Okay. Who has authority to approve the rate, the rate increase? The commissioners. The commissioners. There's typically a public hearing held prior to the, the vote of the bar commissioners. <coughs> I think we're good, Lee. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Yeah. John, was are you good? You ready? I, oh, I was ready before. Okay, so pretty much the same drill. Um, My budget was well funded. At that time, everything went down. Went down to 2.91 percent. Well, there was a uh, there was a good matching fund for grant for a grant that we didn't get, so that's why it went down. It was actually pretty much budget when I figured it actually went down. All right. So nothing, no line item increased. John, your equipment repairs are budgeted at 3500 for the past four years or so, and the last couple of actuals were 11 and 12,000. 100. 100. Um, 11,997. I know. Those are the only actuals I have to go with. That would, I'm, I'm at, the end, at the end of the fiscal it's realistic. At the end of the fiscal year, because I didn't spend my money, it's always been that way. It's leftover. It's leftover money. If the firefighters, we don't have any fire, 
fighters, for example, that's the big thing. Or when I don't use it for training money, I can spend that money on other issues and I buy equipment with it. That's what, that, that's, what that's about. So you could hold it to the 3500 budget if you needed to. Yeah. Then, then he's got to make it up somewhere else. Then he, you know, something else would be, the training would be higher or well, new no, equipment, not I don't know what. Yeah. Not necessarily, Tommy, I think what he's saying is that if I had to keep the equipment down, it typically it gets to the end of the fiscal year and I have extra money because I didn't have the fires or whatever the case may be, or I didn't use it on training, then I can, I can put all that into the, into that one line item. And buy equipment? Hey, yes. Okay. I thought about blacktop one here. That's just the way it happened to me. Blacktop is an equipment. Well, yeah, but that's what, that was, it wasn't this year. That was the, the, the year before. Yeah, right. was, you know, that's, that's all I'm saying. That was a, that's the joys of not having a line item budget. <clears throat> so if, if you're, I don't know if it's forced or recommended to buy new radios and equipment, well, you and I guess the police are in, into that for next year. Is that reflected in this budget? No, that, I don't, that was just, actually, Jim Sabine was putting that in on a separate, that would be a separate line item, I assume, Jim. The capital expenses. Capital expenses. <coughs> and you would buy it for the whole town. For the whole town, but some of that is for your your equipment here, pages and radios? Uh, no, that's just pages and radios. That's just pretty much maintenance. Well, no, you're going to maintenance as well. For God maintenance. <coughs> what? That's, that's annual maintenance. That's fee. a separate fee that gets paid. The for God, that's, that's for people to answer our radios. To answer the cell phones, answer, oh. not the cell phones, answer the, okay. the towers, the take care of the towers. What would you guess the average of the last five years you spent on maintenance? And that? Four or $5,000 a year probably. Send his truck back down to the other end of the state once. It's like a three thousand dollar bill. The new truck. It should be under warranty. Still under warranty. That was not under warranty because what they said what happened was it, the pump was ran dry. So we don't do that again. I hope not. What's the foot? Just this is three hundred bucks for fire detection monitor. Why wasn't there one prior to? Well, I'm like capital planning. Hopefully, they're gonna put smoke detectors in the fire station. Uh, and the smoke detectors in the fire station, only the neighbors would hear them if they go off. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe if they're home. <clears throat> so that would be a monitoring system that would actually go to ADC probably, sure. and they would call nine one one and. We were told there before the fire the room. Um, last year, turn, turnout here was, I, m I remember we had a big discussion about that, having to replace. It's in, it's been issued? Yeah. Okay. Not at this time. Everybody's happy? Yeah. I, I, no, they're never happy, but they're like, they're like kids. Yeah. You give a toy, they want another, they want another toy. They want something else now. They want new toys. Yeah. Uh, but. Generally, that got them filled. Yep. Okay. That was recent. You got those too, wasn't it? Two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. They finally came in two weeks ago. That's all special order, all special fit. They make use of fit everybody in the department. And sometimes, you know, Omar and you know the, the little skinny guys here. So take them out and measure them, and then they check for special make all that. Are we still paying for the rescue boat? Yeah. That's a, that's a that's a it's twenty five hundred a year. Or? Um, that, that line item is put in there so they we blow it up. That's new to, so we can actually keep it in service if something happens to that, to that motor. Okay. We bought ice rescue equipment with it last year. <coughs> it kind of goes with the boat, right? Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. You know, you're honest. You're, yeah, you're honest. Right. Well, give you know, a lot of credit, John. You're you honest. Know you know what? You know what, Tommy? We put that stuff on to go out on, on Alex Pond last year. Yep. And those guys were cold when they got out of the water yeah, because that's, that stuff is, I don't know how many years old that those wetsuits are, the ice rescue suits are. Well, mm -hmm. 
you know, this it works. So, you know, so anything that has there's, there's, there's anything to do with water rescue, it goes down here as as rescue, rescue boat, kind of. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, well, I mean, it's, it kind of sounds. Like, I mean, yeah. We we own the boat, John. Why do we have yeah. twenty five hundred in the budget every year? Because well, twenty five hundred a year, I'm expecting to see outriggers on there for fishing yeah, on the I Connecticut. Want, I want to see a bigger but, motor on it every year yeah. or something. Yeah. But you have to hold or another motor. <laughs> Did you see the waves it makes in out in uh, Tri Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a, a, maybe this is a novice sort of question, but. Under rescue vote, there's 2,500 in fiscal year 17, but it looks like zero was expended. So, thinking of what you had said earlier, that meant you were free to take that $2,500 and spend it somewhere else where it was needed. Is that, or was it, because like, there's other Spending things. Well, oh, for example, that like uh, equipment replacement repair it was almost three times as much as you had asked for actually got expended in that category. <clears throat> is this just because things just tend to go into different categories or 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 what? I mean, it's an obvious question. Please teach me how I should be reading this. Well, I, you're probably doing better than I am. I, 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 I was going to say, I can answer that. Go ahead, Tommy. If you, in that FY17 expended column, um, take uh, vehicle maintenance, he budgeted nine thousand dollars, but he spent thirteen thousand seven hundred nine ninety eight. So that extra came from somewhere. Right. So that, that's that's exactly that's part of it. Then you go down uh, equipment replacement and repair. He budgeted thirty five hundred, but he spent eleven thousand one eighteen. Right. That's yeah. that's, yeah. that's four hundred yeah. percent. Well, that's, exactly. that, that, that's where you know the numbers all add up. He just takes it out of different columns. Well, then why are we putting? these columns that we don't spend anything continually in, and why don't we just put more than 3,500 into equipment replacement or repair? I think that the, the rescue button yes. is sort of a provisional against the motor needing significant repair replacement, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't get spent for that, then it gets used on some other equipment. Well, sure. But, but does that mean that this year there's not going to be, a, like, it, it's consistently eleven thousand uh, to twelve thousand dollars needed there, but we're only budgeting thirty-five hundred. So why does I that mean that the these other things actually cost plus. something? Can you really, can you really manage with thirty-five hundred for equipment? Or it doesn't look like it from sixteen to seventeen. Well, and, I, and, I, and EMS doesn't look like it's ever spent. I'm not sure what the, what the EMS. I, I, I would say that that's probably a certain, and then I could be totally wrong, but looking at two years is a pretty small snap snapshot mm -hmm. as to what he's spending. You may be absolutely right that that number is underfunded. That that line item is underfunded. You could, but I don't know that. Yeah. I don't, or it could be overfunded. I, well, I don't think, I don't believe that. But, but the, the but when taking a look at a two-year snapshot, all of a sudden he had a, this catastrophe two years in a row that he had to spend $6,000 on that, you know, and that, that happens. I don't know, that's why Bobby asked, what's your five-year? Because I think that's more of an accurate measure as to what it is. You know, I, I 75% agree with that, but the 25% is, in looking at this, and I'm all for having excess money, because it gets kicked back, hopefully, into the, into the general fund, but it looks like this is not last year, no. It looks like it's just a cut and paste from fiscal year to fiscal year without any thought to trends in how money is spent. And that's what I sort of, that's the only thing. I don't struggle with the, the, the amount of money. It's just, let's let's learn from our trends. But it, it is, it's not a coincidence that it's just the exact same line on year after year after year. Then what else we don't know? I guess it, it could be two years. No, but, but, but I'm guessing that it's, it's under, it's under it's 16, 17, 18, 19, four years with the same plan, all four with years. With the same plan, but we're only two years that we know that we're over. We, I'm not talking about the over. I'm saying I'm saying we need to do a better job of truly evaluating individual line items. Well, that's what I would say if you talked about you bought some right, sort of ice gear or something last year. Why isn't that showing up in that? And what the money was, it was in the, it's in the rest of it. was in the water room. It should be on as a boat. You said you're putting it under the boat. That's where it went, but it didn't. But did there's zero. I don't know why. The rescue boat. I don't know why. That's why it's, I guess it's important to right. not say, I'm going to balance this. I'm not going to go over anywhere, so I'm going to take it from here. It's important to take and put them wherever, you're being, wherever you think you're really 
should be charged. So if you want to know why, I can. I put the numbers in, I put the line item next to it that I want to charge to. And then just as an example, my salary came back high. I know I didn't get overpaid. <laughs> right? I, I just, that's subjective. That's, yeah. Well, it is. It, 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 really it, is. So well, it depends on how many fires there are. Yeah. I know that. Well, no. No, because my salary is the same. Oh, well, how'd, sorry, you, okay. how'd you overspend? How'd you go over? I put the line. I, I have nothing to do with those numbers. But it came back like $1,900 excess. So I, you know, I can't take all the blame for all of that. But I didn't get those extra three checks either. I wasn't, I, John, I wasn't blaming. I was just saying that it's just not a coincidence that the plan for four years in a row are the exact same. Mm -hmm. That's a first yeah, it's like the placeholders, you don't really reflect what's going on. Yeah, either change yeah. the description or change the, the dollar amounts to reflect right. actually what you're spending. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, Otherwise, I, I, you're just a placeholder for continuing forever. And I think you especially know? in those areas like the vehicle maintenance and the equipment repair, which are way off right. from yeah. the budget number. Right. And vehicle maintenance is going to change depending upon old vehicles, new vehicles. I mean, it, it does fluctuate yeah. based upon. I agree. <coughs> that in the last couple of years in our areas. Right. I think part of the answer to this is I know I don't know what what sub accounts we have created for the fire department, but I don't think you have a sub account for rescue boat. Do you? Uh, so the sub accounts that you created with with the, the account. I don't know. So I, I suspect you I suspect there's not a sub account for rescue boats, so you probably when he wants the invoice he probably runs it under equipment repair and replace. So mm -hmm. that either I think we need to combine some of these or create new sub accounts. Right. Um, yeah, I and I wonder the the air pack bottles is forty five hundred. Can you buy air pack bottles? I did buy them. I know I bought them. So, so that 4500 is part of this, probably part of this 11 here. So, yeah. Yeah. so if we could try to straighten out the sub account right. with Ray, maybe yeah. we could yeah. get him. That'd be good if you, could, if, if you could work with him. But I don't, I don't think John is alone on this. Oh. I, I, I mean, let's, let's be up front and, you know, all these guys that manage these departments, they're, they're not accountants. Yeah, they are responsible for the budget, put the budget together and whatnot. Um, and, you know, I mean, to the they might not do yeah. the best they can do. So but to I the think if Brian that, helps them. Yeah, breaking it down actually helps us. Yeah. We should break it down. Mm -hmm. To the extent that that's just an exercise of putting numbers in boxes, we should simplify it. You know, because? Because he's got better things to do sure. than just figure out numbers to put in boxes. Exactly. And, and I'd rather have out there fighting fires and learning. Which is the This is the first time we've actually done the, the line item, the, the numbering system on the line items. Uh, there's this, this budget was so, so much easier this year. I just took the totals and put them in. Plus them in. Right. I didn't have to add up all the expenses for the year. Right. I was like, awesome. Well, I, I think this is what the conversation we had last week with that, what was that gentleman's name that came or two yeah. weeks or whatever it was two weeks ago. You know, so yeah, two years is great, three years is better, five years as to what that, you can start to pinpoint as to what your trends are. Um, you know, I, I think it, what it does say is, it, is that your budget is is funded appropriately, mm -hmm. the total number, uh -huh. but line items aren't. And, right. and, and I don't think any of us want to sit here and say, you've got too much money in this line right. item right here, right. not, not right. this one. But I think it would make it more accurate for you or when you come back and say to us, I need more money, and this is why the trend is showing that you know, I'm underfunded in this, and we might say, okay, but you're overfunded here. Right. Let's work this out. You know. Um. But at the end of the day, um, with the, with these monies, is this town protected? That's yeah. the bottom line. We tell we tell people at town all that, and uh, everybody's good. Any questions for John beyond? Um, no. So Paul, should we ask him to revise this to reflect more on what's not happened this year. in the past? Not, not this I year, but next year. He I, think, I think for next year he needs to <laughs> If he gets voted in again, because he's uh, of retirement age now. So. Right. Um, if we get through time, yep. 
he gets through town meeting, then next year he gets a lesson on how to do a budget. <laughs> but I think you're right, Fred. I think for next year. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a more real. But have the accounts figured out yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. Right. But next year, if we had, you know, more of the the county on the, you know, overhaul of the system, yeah. we may, you know, that may work as well. That's true. Do you want me to report? Put that in the door on your way. Put it in our mailbox. Um, Anything else that you'd like to discuss with well, us? Well, you had capital. I had homework for my capital planning. Course. That's right. Yes. That's capital planning, not finance. No. No. no we, okay. You gave me the. Somebody gave me the homework. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. 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 Here's what. Uh, so it's any case. Yeah. Let's bring us bring everybody up to speed because not everyone was at the at that meeting. Pretty close. Yeah. A few years ago, I put in a capital planning request for forty thousand dollars for command vehicle. Chief's vehicle, command inspection vehicle, meetings, you know, training, uh, having a command vehicle on the scene. So, I've heard numerous reports that there's no way this is going to happen to the fire department. The plan is we still have areas in Town Whaley we don't have any service. And we still have private vehicles out on the highway. <laughs> when it, it, it could very easily be a command vehicle. That needs, whether it's whether transports me or transports my people, it swaps my people back and forth. It could have it, a radio system that's updated, uh, GPS, internet, it, it should be up with that. So, I don't need a new vehicle. I'm not asking for a new vehicle. I requested $40,000 years ago. Now, in the system, it comes up to, we don't argue about this until the, until the dollar signs come out. And this is what this is what we're doing. So this is just maybe this is a stupid way to do it, but I went to Carfax and figured out that I wanted to buy a vehicle that had less than 100,000 miles, was less than 10 years old, had no accidents, and the, the list I had here was less than $25,000 because to put a radio in it, $5,000. Satellite radio. Let's. Well, I don't know, it's a satellite no, no, radio. satellite phone you wanted it. Right. Pardon me. Pardon me. The, sun, the radio system still has to go to Tri State Fire Mutual Aid on. Yep. And now th that's going to be a tough situ tough scenario. She's to me, probably speak to it better than I can. We're changing frequencies again. We're going from 800, they're going to 900, Jim? They're going to 800. Uh, they're going to 800. They're from going from to whatever it is now to 800 <clears throat> megahertz. So that you can have better coverage. And I don't know that that's going to work. So, but when I called Motorola the other day, they said those radios are almost five thousand um, dollars. And if you buy stuff off Carfax, you have to have some sort of a lighting package on it, so you know, with overhead lights, flashers, and you know, so you're safe out on the highway. And that's a two thousand dollar bill. So I have a light came up with a list, and I believe that I can do this for thirty thousand dollars instead of forty thousand dollars. Now, unless I want to buy a jump. And I don't think anybody would recommend buying a junk. I mean, and I say if 150,000 miles, yeah, you buy something with over 100,000 miles, your price tag goes down a lot. You want to buy something that's over 10 years old? I don't. I don't know the answer. I don't want to sit here and have to do this in three years from now. Yeah. So essentially, what you're advocating for <coughs> is to get a, a used vehicle, mm -hmm. is, and then. Built. Building that vehicle with components that you feel need to be in it. Yep. And, though, and the total of those components would be probably somewhere in the... $30,000 range. Plus the, plus the car or the no, car? No, that's, that's total. So... I mean, those are the basic essentials that I would be looking for, Paul. A radio, mm -hmm. a lighting package, mm -hmm. so they're safe out on the highways. So uh, when you speak to the safety concern now, um, it's being on the highway uh, with personal cars. Is, is, is there a uh, liability issue with personal cars? Um, There's a liability issue when they go to the, respond to the fire station, not to go to call, call out on the highway. I don't want them out there because then you have to argue with the police. And I don't like doing that because they carry guns. Yeah. But, Except, I mean, if I need them out there, I'll call them out there, and I'll put them in trucks and bring them out there. 
and put sometimes they don't all make that first new truck it's out there you're bringing more trucks the backup trucks only carry two people the operator two people so and, it's, How many times? and i'll tell you what when i close the highway i might as well tell the governor he's how many towns in Franklin County have a vehicle like this? Why? I, I don't know. The, I don't know the answer. Does Deerfield have one? Yes. Yeah, they got a couple. Does Sunderland have one? They got everything. Conway does. Conway does. <laughs> Conway does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, yeah. I think Sunderland usually gets an old. They might have more than that. Well, yeah. yeah. I thought of that, but they're, that's, you know, it's not four wheel drive. Yeah. Four wheel drive. Are you your food? It's got to be four wheel drive. Paul, let me just say. No. Please. Let me just say, and. Yep, good for Dan, you support me or whatever on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Talked about this, and our concern wasn't really that the cost of the type of vehicle; it was really justifying the need for it. And why do you need a vehicle to transport people to a fire when, well, one reason now was you got a new fire truck that holds what four or six people, whereas before you could only hold what two. Yeah. And, and the location where this can be, your house, so people still have to get in their own private vehicle to what go to your house or the station to meet this vehicle, which is going maybe out of the way of, of, of the fire. So then people may not be getting there any sooner than driving their own vehicle to the fire. But we couldn't justify the, the, really the need for it. My and people it respond to the fire truck. Or the type, but. When my pager goes off, my people respond to the fire station. That is the policy, unless they're going to drive by the fire, then they're allowed to stay there, provided they have their protective clothing in their vehicle. I can't find, I can't come up with a better way than that. The, the, the vehicle is called a command vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's what you, yep. that's the terminology yep. that you've got. Okay. So you got a fire, everybody's at the fire, cars all over the place. How do you communicate? with the rest of the world during that fire right right radio. now radio the radio, radio in your car yep for my portable radio okay and what other technology is in what other technology do you use during that fire phone yep and is that the case for let's say when the deerfield guys have well they got two command vehicles somebody said uh -huh. So when they go to a fire, right. how is that different than no what, different? No different. Not really. They have their own vehicle. They have their they have their, their rescue truck. They have engines. They have towers. That they, they have a pickup that they use. Is they have their uh, for all of their operations. So the main deficiency right now in this town, <clears throat> without having a command vehicle for the fire department, is what? What are, what are we missing out on by not having that? It's twofold, right? Communications and transportation station to fire on 91 or something right. like that. Well, it's getting into the 21st century. That's what sure. it is. I mean, if you want to stay in the 20th century, you stay there. You, don't, you say no. I'm not looking it's for a fire. It's, a, it's an easy thing. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, if you want to start advanced, yeah. I'm not, if you want to advance the department, you advance it. If you don't, you don't. Yourself, all of the things that... It, Go ahead. You can bring it up. One of the things that John hasn't alluded to is in this day and age, the fire department responds to everything from A to Z. Yeah. There's multiple times where we've gotten calls for a lost person in the woods and things of that nature. Now, we're certainly not going to be taking a six-man fire truck out through the really? backwoods. What's been having to be done in the past, John takes his own personal vehicle and has to drive through the four-wheel drive roads and things of that nature. He shouldn't always have to take his own personal vehicle through that kind of that kind of train. It's not there. You can't take it, right? But I mean, you know what I'm saying. But that's that's what he right. has to do in in some of his instances. These towns that have these vehicles, they're in the 21st century. That's what they would be responding with. They would not be taking their personal vehicle <laughs> through the woods to do that kind of thing. And it's you know that's just one aspect of. As I said, we get called to do. We had a 
call not that long ago for a cat up in a tree and, and on Conway Road. And there again, we didn't need no fire truck, but that's the nature of some of our calls. So I should know this, but I don't, and I apologize. How many calls does the fire, the fire department get a year? 75. 75 total calls? That includes power accidents, medical, is, medical assists, ADC. fires, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. 75, okay. So where would this vehicle be housed? At the station? At, I have, I've had this. Residence or where? I've had that discussion with every, a lot of people. If I'm going to use it to go do inspections, I might as well have it in my house, but the, he's more than welcome to use it anytime he needs it. I mean, they use it to do, go to training. That's just, they all have my phone number, every one of them. Okay, but explain, how is it going to help get firefighters there if it's at your house? Other than you getting there maybe sooner, but. Well, if you're at the scene, or if I'm going to pick up extra people at the station, take them out on the highway. Okay. I can. They can get in and go. They can ride with me. They can. You know, we can go if you want to search. If you want to uh, uh, ice rescue, you can. Uh, you know, whatever it is, the case may be. So that's well. So our, our, I mean, our, in our last meeting, I mean, that was the crux of uh, what I might thought was. You know, John said he's been asking for the same thing for a number of years. And I said, we were at it, you put the same dollar amount on it every year. You know, so does that make any sense to what we've been talking about in the other department? So, you know, I don't want you to, to and I, I think Fred's the same thing. It's not really a dollar number, and I'm not afraid of the 40,000. I wasn't, a need. I wasn't, and so, what, was it a real number? Now, I would actually look at it saying, geez, you're looking at something just under 100,000, you know, miles, I'd probably, look to get something a little bit nicer so we're not sitting here and you're trying to replace that thing every right every four years or every five years oh, and make sure that you know the seven thousand dollars that we have here for radio and lighting is that a, is that enough you know, we talked about a satellite phone or radio or something like that before all those other things I mean, some of those things you have to when you start, start doing things like that some of those things you have to on you I come on the budget yeah I mean yeah. But I just want I just want to make sure that the that the numbers reflect what you're really mm -hmm. looking for. And, you know, I, the, the difference between 30,000 and 40,000 isn't gonna change anybody's well, tax bill no, that much. No, but it's, it's, it's an additional, the, the, the ad of this vehicle under help is an additional $400 a call. Mm -hmm. For the vehicle. Well, for one year. For one year, for one year. I get that. Right, I mean, I we're not turning it over. Amortizing over four years, four years. Yeah. it's $100. Right. I get that. You know? yep. So, I mean, that's that's what it is. All these trucks are the same way. I mean, as you know, we just spent how much on a new fire truck? Right, so you want to start putting how much each call costs for that? Really? It could, it could save a lot of expensive deep Yeah. Say that, you know, instead of bringing the truck or something, they go over the he checks out what we need. If we need additional equipment, then you call back the station and you get it. So, like that. I mean, it's a responsibility yeah, that's the vehicle is to buy it. I truly don't think it's a luxury item. I mean, it's, not it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a make or break, but I, I do think that it's, it puts you back in the game. Okay. You know? I, I, I do. Just <laughs> listening to everything, you definitely have risen the. Uh, you know the need it's definitely higher now than it was in the last meeting and it's a lot higher than it was the year before so there, everyone's sensitive to that need um, what what we really don't have is a good picture on the dollar and cents that we need to fill that hole now that's what I think when Brian comes back in and I just think you got to look at you got to go new, and you got to go maybe something a lot better than you know something under thirty thousand miles, uh, forty thousand miles, something in that range, so that people feel good about throwing money at a vehicle that, as I said, no one has to be under the hood, right now. Um, so because um, it's a safety. Issue. Um, but that's that that brings you know that's a certain number that we still don't have you know I mean we're getting close 
<coughs> okay. Um, anybody else have any? What do you think of that, Fred? Yeah, I, I don't think we should buy a new vehicle. I, I think buy something that's halfway decent, reasonable, and see how much use you get out of it. You know, we hear from the police, they put on 35000 a year on a vehicle, so we know for five years it's pretty much used up. This, see how much you use after a year or two, and if it is used a lot and you can see it's not going to last, well, then maybe we we'll buy something better. Yeah. I guess start with something reasonable, I guess what I'm saying to begin with. And I decided, the other side of that is, it's, I mean, it is four wheel drive. If I'm going to yeah. go off road, it's going to be yeah. half. Well, half yeah. Especially if it goes off road, you, you've got liability issues also. If he's taking his own car off road yep. on town business as opposed to taking a town vehicle, that you can get. If anything were to happen to the, to the vehicle or the person driving it, you may have issues, you know, town issues. Because he's driving. That's what it bothers me out on the highway, to be honest with you. Yep. Well, I I'm not advocating for a new vehicle by any means, but it would be really good to know what a new vehicle would cost, so that we can have a comparative um, with what may come down the line. So, you okay. know, what did Deerfield spend? You know, on. You, you know, <laughs> so, you, know, you know, or whatever town. And the other thing, I, I think we all need a piece of paper with line items for what that radio that you're talking about. You know, I mean, is this going to be a new radio on this new frequency, and then it's going to change again? Can any of these radios be used for? This later change that's coming in frequency, probably not, right? Yeah. If they go to the high frequency like the state police thing, no, 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 they won't be a completely different frequency. Yeah, all our radios, all our radios in the fire station will be trash. Yeah, <coughs> fire police, you know, over. So if I think if you could give us a uh, a rough idea on, you did a hundred thousand, right? Less than hundred. Well, how about something less than fifty? less than 25, give us some numbers to look at where we would have a, be more willing to Maybe give I'll you more Maybe I'll call next time instead of doing this by myself. Yeah, what? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, segue into our next, next uh, topic here. What, what does Kim's have? You have you have a vehicle like that, command vehicle, or what do you call it, transport vehicle, is that? Um, we currently have to use ambulances for any okay. sort of business like that. I drive my personal vehicle around to emergencies as well, and we have the same concerns about liability and, and wear and tear and stuff like that. So are you looking at getting a, another vehicle? For uh, eventually, down the road, it seems like for a department that is responding to emergencies and we have all these additional requirements now, not just, you know, fire responding to searches in the woods, you know, same thing for us. If ambulance isn't the, always the most appropriate thing for us, that down the road, that's certainly a, a void that we need to fill. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Are nope. we good? Um, We're good. Um, so we got next steps with, with uh, John uh, figures to get some hard numbers for us. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, John. Sorry, cut into your time, Keith. <laughs> All right, ambulance, South County, EMS. Do I get to cut you? Yeah, I'm last. Oh, oh all right. <coughs> Just here for the show. So the sheet is revised from what was originally sent. Okay. So if you have a number in mind that you memorized from doing your homework, then it's different. Well, I memorized all those numbers. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm Zachary Smith. I'm the EMS director for South County EMS. Um, so thank you. Uh, yes, we have some updated numbers. Um, I, you know, last year, South County EMS, we did 1,055 calls. 
Um, and when I say calls, I mean we, we treated or assessed 1,055 people. We do a lot of things on top of that. So we do the um, health sciences fair at the elementary school. We do standbys for the road races in town and things like that. So we saw 1,055 patients last year. That's up 10% from the year before. Um, so our call volume is growing. I think a lot of that is people know we're here now. We know that we're um, a great service and we can provide a higher level of care to the community. So whereas people used to call, or sorry, not call 911, just drive themselves to the hospital, they realize that they can call 911 today. So that's, uh, that's good for us and, and everybody else. Uh, the budget that you've seen, uh, so we started with fiscal year 2015, so we have four years of information now. So a lot of these numbers have been adjusted um, to include their averages or trends uh, where they seem most appropriate. And when you look at this budget, uh, it's really divided up into three categories. We have operational expenses. So that's the equipment that we use, the maintenance of our vehicles, things like that. Uh, and that's actually been reduced from the previous year. So that's down almost 2%. Um, and that's just from being able to look at our trends and our averages and kind of dial in what we're actually spending in our community. The other thing to look at is our anticipated uh, revenue. So we do bill for services. This is typical in our industry. So there's a certain amount of money that we need to keep the lights on and keep that staff there 24 seven. And as people use our service, we then bill their insurance company. Um, and Affordable Care Act, we don't really know, but Massachusetts has that health insurance mandate. So all the patients that we see are supposed to be insured. Our out of town patients, they're typically involved in motor vehicle accidents and car insurance pays for that. So our estimated revenue has actually increased over the years um, and it's up from uh, $4,500 to $500,000 for FY19. So that's a 11% uh, increase. Um, and I think that's probably where we're gonna sell. Um, assuming that nothing gross happens in the health insurance, it, field or things like that. I think that that is a comfortable number um, that we can rely on. So that's up. So operating expenses are down. Retained earnings are up. That's great news. The last category that we have here is personnel costs. Um, and this is where we see the largest increase from last year. There's a few things at play here. Um, the majority of it is the benefits and county retirement, those things which we are responsible for as an enterprise fund. So we account for all those things in our budget, so then through the, the town assessments, everybody's uh, paying their share. And we're seeing a 25% increase in retirement um, expenses, an 8% increase in workman's comp, 12% increase in medical insurance, um, and a 10% increase in Medicare tax. So across the board, these are all things that are being dictated us to us from outside. Um, we have a 19% increase on the employee benefits line item. The last thing there, you also see a, um, a significant change in the expense for the full-time staff. We're a regional municipal service, but Deerfield is a fiscal agent, so all of our employees are employees of the town of Deerfield for the purposes of benefits and payroll and things like that. And the town of Deerfield last year went through a process where they updated their classification compensation scale. It hadn't been updated for close to a decade. So they went through, adjusted that. Um, we also had a shift differential adjustment. Um, it increased. So now if you work between the hours of 3 p.m. and 11 p.m., you get a dollar extra an hour. And 11 p.m. and 7 a.m., you get a dollar 50 extra an hour. So that's also an increase that is included um, in that budget. And because we're town employees, we have a personnel board in Deerfield that decides on colas and things like that. We haven't received a recommendation yet from them. And so the number that is budgeted here is a worst case scenario as far as budgeting goes. And this represents both a step and a COLA for all the full-time employees. This was a recommendation from the town of Deerfield as a placeholder while they're still working those things out. We've discussed at the Board of Oversight level, so the, the Board of Oversight is above me, um, comprised of people from all three towns, and we discussed about what role should the Board of Oversight and STEMs have in determining our own salaries and things like that. Uh, that's a discussion we're having now. For the time being, we're still dictated by the, um, the personnel board and stuff and the, the Deerfield bylaws. So those large increases in the personnel costs are 
coming from outside, and that's what's budgeted here. We get down to the very bottom, um, and uh, our overall expenses have remained pretty steady uh, since our inception. What does fluctuate and what has fluctuated is the individual town assessment. Um, and the reason why there appears to be a big jump in our costs this year is only because our retained earnings, as we get a better idea of what our expenses actually are, our retained earnings are decreased, and the Board of Oversight hasn't made a decision yet right now about how or when we're going to apply those retained earnings. Um, you may have heard we have a building that's being built in Deerfield. Not sure if you were aware. <laughs> um, but part of that process is we don't know we don't know what's included in that. We don't know if it's gonna be four walls and that's it or what. So we're anticipating some expenses as far as just moving in that, that final push. And the Board of Oversight is hesitant to commit all of our available money right now to lowering our assessments again only to find ourselves without anything to cover those other assessments. Well, it's kind of surprising that you would think that there's gonna be four walls where you don't know. I mean, this thing was all over the place. This was supposed to be the end all to the world I imagine, here. I imagine well, that there's some detail involved in what that building is going to include. I, I, I have no idea what they're planning for. Um, quite so that's really surprising. That shocks me. Really. That is, I, I guarantee you, uh, we have been very careful, and that is by design. That uh, I have had no involvement. We don't know what's going on. We really won't know um, at all. Um, and <laughs> why are you? Why are you doing this? That's completely ridiculous. That's crazy. <laughs> you should be the one. <laughs> you should, you should, be, you should be telling them what you want. Uh, you know. <laughs> Because it's Deerfield, that's why. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. It's the, the silence is due to the reality that if the towns know too much, then we will be subject to prevailing wage laws, bumping the cost of the project. The, for better or worse, the legal interpretation <laughs> of requirement to pay prevailing wage from a gift, in this case from Deerfield Academy, mm -hmm. is that Deerfield Academy as a private entity is not subject to prevailing wage laws right. as long as the town that the gift is going to is not involved with the design and what the ultimate product looks like. So so that's for better or worse. Okay. That's, that's why I get it. it's a huge yeah. unknown what this is going to look like. I certainly hope that the gift, and it's a generous gift from Deerfield Academy, no question at all about that. I certainly hope that the gift has taken into account traditional needs of an ambulance service, mm -hmm. and that when traditional needs are taken into account, when the doors are unlocked and the ribbon cutting takes place, that we find that there's an awful lot in there that we, we will need. That's baloney. Well, that's unbelievable. Yeah. You got a select board member that drove yeah. this whole thing. You don't think that he had any designs? Of course he did. I, well, you're just saying we're being, we're, we're just doing this thing underhandedly. That's, and I can't believe the towns would do that either. We're doing renovations to our town hall that we're paying twice what it should cost right. because we got to pay that's prevailing wage. But I'm they sure turn right. around. I'm sure you're right. I'm, I'm sure, sure you are. are. And, but, but that's, that's underhanded. And, and you tell me that you're doing it and, and can't afford to pay the time out. prevailing wage. You guys <laughs> have watched Kevin Scarborough and, and, and paid attention to some of the dialogue we've had in the Board of Oversight. I'm on your side on this one. I have acted in ways that I have, I'm ashamed of in terms of raising my voice in these meetings because of exactly what you guys are talking about. But, but you got told to shut up. But right? it doesn't change the reality. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. when you say they can't be involved in the design, that means information going from the towns in. They're not allowed to even tell us what they're planning. They, I mean, why can't we just find, I mean, that doesn't sound like we're consulting. It sounds like they're just making information available. So can they not make information they, available? They we don't get to respond to it. We don't get to you know, say it's put that over the wall. We're but not, we Brian can speak and tell them what we want because it's a gift. This Hold up, Brian can speak to, to the legal interpretation from... I'm not saying to tell them what we want. Tell them what they're going to give us. 
Uh, they're not allowed to tell us what the oh, gift well, is. Any details? Yeah, so. Just give us a number. Keep the, the I have to the airfield, not to. Yeah, what if you don't want it? We're right. just right in the building. The question I have, though, is exactly right. We're right. Right. One, one, one at a time. We, we're going to end up paying for it. Right, but it's Deerfield Academy's building. Skims does not own it, and there's have to be well, an act made by at least Deerfield to accept the donation of the building, right? And it, it, it might. I, I'm not sure I'm right. the correct person to be going on about right. the ins That's and outs of, yeah. 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 Right. I mean, there are some so, peculiar differences, right? Right. But it's not Skim's building yet. Uh, not not yet, right. Well, it'll never be Skim's building. It'll, it'll be the town of Deerfield. It'll be the town of Deerfield. And we will be tenants in that building. Yes. Okay, Keith. The question I guess I have is, will there not be a time where the Board of Oversight will vote as to whether they want to occupy that building. Has the Board of Oversight there voted? Will be, there will be an ultimate vote on that. Okay, so that if what is presented is not adequate or totally wrong, what Skims doesn't have to go there. In, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, theoretically, you're right. Okay. In theoretically, I mean, right. you're all worried about if they're going to provide what's necessary. If I'm, it's I'm not provided. Sure. I'm pretty sure that they're going to provide. I'm sure they are lot, too, but, but I'm, at but the same point in time, it's not like it's you have to go there. At, at what point of the process is this presented to the Board of Oversight? I mean, to, 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 to Joe's point, there's probably more known than... I'm sure that you're right. But we do know it could turn the wrong way. The page is supposed to point south. Did hear that. It's and they good. point to the east. Well. But no one yeah. could get involved to correct it. What is that like? You can't have a hitter facing the sun from home plate? I don't know. <laughs> well, you, know, you typically always open your base to the south. Um, Town if you say so. Fire okay. station. Fire station. All our buildings. If you can. Right. Yeah, yeah. you can. Our schools to the east. Is there a time frame on this? Uh, my understanding is it's getting close. It's, it's, it's there the sightings going up and things yeah. like that. So we're in the home stretch okay. as far as that goes. Well, we have. We can't deal with that now. So um, um, regarding the budget that's before us, do we have any inquiries? Any? I have one. Is how much do you eat on what your bill? How much do I eat? How much do they eat? How much of the billing you eat that people don't pay? Uh, oh, oh, that's a great question. Um, we are currently collecting across the board. It's like ninety-two percent. Okay. Um, which includes everything from people who don't pay to people with insurance, which is exceptionally good. And that's a representation of the people that we have um, living in our community and then everybody's got insurance and things like that. If you head out to some other communities um, with lower level incomes, you start to see that drop. So we're doing, we're doing very well. I think, I think it's probably a little bit better than it was when we were just waiting. Yeah. Yep. So because we rub those things off on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, and we're also I, we, we really lean heavily on technology. So all of our patient care reports are electronic. Those are forwarded automatically to our, our billing agency. So those things happen faster, which also helps and, and more efficiently. So. And what is the breakdown of calls? Breakdown of calls. Um, as uh, how would you like it broken down? By town. Um, so uh, last year, so for calendar year 2017, those. 1,055, 142 of them uh, were Waitley. Sund Sunderland, one, 142. 142. Sunderland was 267. Deerfield was 552. Um, and the remaining 60, 70, 80 or so uh, were to mutual aid to the communities around us when their ambulances were, were overtaxed. Waitley's percentage ticked up a little bit. Uh, percentage. Let me think. 142. Percent. Last year was 128. Out of if I'm remembering the numbers last time I saw them, I think our percentage ticked up a little bit. I our total calls did. Yes, total calls did as a percentage of all of them. I, right. it's, but I think it's, our percentage might have ticked up just a little bit. Get but not know this, but how is that assessment? And uh, you don't have to get into all, yeah. all the details, but how is that broken down? Uh, so that's equalized value, um, and that's uh, an established Department of Revenue thing where they take population and per capita income and then 
smoosh it together and come out with a percentage based on ability to pay and stuff like that. And Wakeley's um, represents 16.76% of the total budget. Still, it's still, still really right. good figure. We had 1,500 calls, was it? Was it 1,500? 1,055. Uh, 1,055, okay, I yeah. thought we were in line, but no. <laughs> yeah. um, and it just, because the, because the population and ability to pay and things like that is very equal amongst the three towns, um, these percentages, though based on ability to pay and population, work out very close to the amount of times we go to each town as well. So um, it just, it happens to work out very friendly like that. And, and it is still a pretty good deal that we're getting. Yeah, it's a really good deal. I, it, you know, it's it, not that I think I need to sell our service, um, but for 24-7 paramedic coverage, I mean, there's a, there's a community just kind of to the south across the river that's looking at this right now, um, and 24-7 paramedics cost you $1.2, $1 $1.3 million a year, I, like, all day long. That's what it costs. Um, and so, for a community to have figured out a way to get it for, you know, a ten percent of that or something, I you really, you really nailed it. I keep getting uh, approached all over the state, wondering, you know, people asking how we can do it there. So. Well, we have to have towns that are close, close to one another. Well, there's, that's usually that's yeah. usually where my speech goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the geography yeah. close it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Right. Spend more time driving and servicing. Alrighty. Um, any last thoughts, comments, feelings? Do you have any idea when the when the board vote cycle or when the budget will be more final? Uh, the next board of oversight meeting is at the end of this month. It's next Thursday, isn't it? Next or did we do fourth Thursday this? Third. Um, the third. We didn't have a for a number of reasons. We got a quorum at the last meeting. So. The, only, the, the question that I have, and, and I've been the one pushing the, the need for the three towns to do a better job communicating about the raises, um, because as much as the town of Deerfield is the fiscal agent, we need to have consensus among the three towns in terms of what, what increase we should be providing, because we don't have that same COLA and STEPS process that other towns do, uh, and I can't speak for Sutherland. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that it'll happen for this year, but I but I am certain that for next year's planning, um, we will have had to have decided how we are going to suggest to the town of Deerfield that the SCEMS employees raises take place. Um, whether it whether the vote is to decide to go along with whatever the town of Deerfield does or not, I, I don't know. But we're going to look at this very carefully because it. If we're truly in, uh, on equal footing, and for these kinds of decisions, I think we are, um, we need to have the three towns really, really put their heads together and say, all right, what is the increase going to be? What are the upsides and downsides to going with the town of Deerfield's uh, personnel policy and going a little bit out of that policy? But we may not be there at this point. But they are all considered employees of the town of Deerfield. And they have to be employees of one of the towns, absolutely. That's okay. just the way it goes. Oh, yeah. And because town, Deerfield is obviously the largest If town. they weren't, would that, that would probably affect our personnel, I don't know how many policies. If what? If they were, if they were, if the SCEMS employees were actually employed by the individual towns, then the individual town all of the employees in that town would be affected by whatever. Yeah, and you couldn't. You couldn't. It'd be know, crazy. Yeah. You couldn't do it. That It'd way. be nuts. You, you couldn't do it. The, the other, the other model that that is close by here um, is Hilltown, and they created it, its own 501c3, and so all the employees are employees of the nonprofit. Yeah. And the guy who found it said that we did it right, the way the way it's set up. There may be downsides. Yeah. Um, and we could look at, at some point, we can look at whether Sunderland or Wakeley should be the fiscal agent rather than Deerfield, that's the whole other kettle of fish. Yeah. But we, we did it right, we just have to live with, with, with certain issues and we're learning how to deal with it as we go. Mm -hmm. and, and if not this year, and I hope it's this year, but I, because we didn't have a quorum in the last meeting, I gotta believe it's probably gonna be next year yeah. where we have a better sense of whether we're gonna 
go with the, 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 the Deerfield schedule or whether we'll create our own schedule in the personnel committee in Deerfield and the select board, et cetera, we'll just have to say, yeah, they're, they're not the same beast. Board out there. I got one question for you. Mm -hmm. Under rent, yeah. it's 50287 Yep. Once you move into this new building, are we going to continue to pay rent um, on a building that Deerfield didn't spend a nickel on? Uh, my understanding as discussed was that the answer to that question is yes, and that money will go into an account for the purpose of maintenance and work on the building itself. Um, so in theory, when they need a new roof in 15 years, we wouldn't be assessed for a new roof. If we're 15 years at 50,000 a year, there's going to be a lot of money in there. 36,000. Would you have to do that? Oh, you're singing my, you're singing my song, but 36,000. 36,000, yeah. Same we asked here in the we yes, because it would be part right. of our budget. And, and that's on top of the administrative fee. Rent. Is rent going to be paid by all three towns? It is now, and the assumption is that it will continue. To okay. I have said long, long and hard that if, if Whaley were the fiscal agent, we, we'd be happy not to charge the fee. And it would be an in-kind contribution to the organization and the other two towns. But that seems to fall on deaf ears. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to get into that. All right. For, okay. Um, Thank you. Of course. I think, I think, I think we're good. That's a fact. Uh, we, we've chewed a... Yeah. Treat right. to the bone. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, we can beat it to death. That's what you're doing. That versus death. Well, we've done these guys to know, but it's still a great yeah, service. Right? I know. That's the reality. It's a great service. I hope I yeah. never see you. Yeah. <laughs> I finally, you're yeah, one I guy I hope I never see. I finally found a job where my bosses say they don't want to see me work at. That's right. Yeah. I don't want to see you at work. <laughs> I'll see you somewhere for a beer, but not for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next on the agenda is um, I guess the police. Police. Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're the next in the stack. Yeah. Right? You're within public safety, so that works for me. I would think. Okay, hey, Chief. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a pretty simple budget this year, um, as far as the any increases go. There's only really one, two, three. What we're looking at for increases are. For what I consider minor increases, with the largest one being um, $170. That's the IMC just maintenance fee. <coughs> maintenance fees, they don't seem to go down. Annual fees don't seem to go down. They apparently keep going up. So um, slight increase for that. The mileage and meetings. <coughs> I added to the mileage of meetings line, and I believe I, um, yeah, I outlined it in the police budget outline, but um, added without knowing um, for future costs, just added the $150 to that because we are looking at meetings that I had with the select board, looking at quarterly community outreach meetings and in the anticipation that there may be some funds associated with providing those community outreach programs, whether it's purchasing equipment, whether it's paper for flyers, or whatever it might be. Um, I, I can't give you a definitive answer as to what exactly it's gonna be. I know some of the things that we've, we've discussed that we're doing this year, um, but I'm not sure moving forward exactly what it's, what it's gonna cost. It, it may not cost $150, yep. it may cost more, I'm just not sure. <clears throat> Where that's going to be. My, the mileage part is a misnomer because you're using the town vehicle, so we're not paying you mileage 
to use yeah. our vehicle. Correct, and that's the way the lines always showed up as mileage meetings. That's the way it's always been. I mean, I could change that line, but that's the way it's always been. Yeah, it's like so the cost is actually the meeting cost, like the <laughs> registration cost or something like that, not really like mileage the rest meeting. Of is that correct as far as meetings? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Meetings that we might have, or meetings that, that, that you might, might have go to. to. Yeah. yeah. Um, my question, and I'm, I don't sit on the personnel committee, so maybe I missed something. Are we not providing any salary increases this year for our employees? It hasn't been voted. It hasn't been voted. But uh, okay. So if it does, if there's a, we have a number. Typically, now I may be wrong, but typically it wouldn't show up in his budget when he presents it. And then right. after the personnel committee votes, <clears throat> if it's a 1%, it's going to cost a total right. for every de all the departments together, it's going to cost X amount of money. And if it's 2%, it's going to cost X amount of money. And then we just apply that. We just right. apply right. that number to balance yeah. the budget. I, I'm just going to encourage that that process be expedited in future years because when we have these are great meetings. How can you? But we don't. Well, know, how would you not? We don't know a lot no. of the numbers, the things that we would want to know to make that like the computer. I was the computer price index. Sorry. Uh, sure. They were they got sure. our, at our last meeting in January. We did not have. Uh, some of those numbers. Mm -hmm. I think we had one of the numbers we wanted, but there were a couple of others we wanted to look at as well. So okay. that was put off to the February. Yeah, we'll but it's it's still in the early in the budget season. Yeah. We will. I oh, now the chairman is sitting right there. I'm assuming we're going to have a number in yeah, about two sure. weeks. Our next meeting is on the this month. 21st. 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 Okay, 21st. 21st. And we will have a number. We've already yeah, I mean, again, our our thought process as we go through it is we have a group of towns that we use as our comparison. And this year we have done a major overhaul in the towns that we compare to. We, we went out as far as looking at Brian, you might have all the criteria, but things like population, um, per capita, per capita income, income um, the amount of industry, it, a lot of factors so that the towns that we're comparing, for instance, we're not comparing Waitley with Deerfield anymore, whereas we used to use them because they neighbor or a neighboring town, but we don't compare with them anymore. We did pick up some towns that are kind of odd, but um, Hinsdale, Mass was one of them. But they line up on all the different categories very equal to us. So we're going to look in part of the criteria we want to know is a little bit as to if we're going to use these towns, we sort of want to try to see if we can have an indication from some of them what they might be looking at for colas. So that if we pre present a cola, it's pretty much similar to what those other towns are going to do. Because if we can afford it, then they should be able to afford it because that's one of the um, biggest things is looking at per capita income. Um, and um, so anyways, yes, and the other thing was the, we wanted to wait and find out what was happening with the health insurance, which the Board of Selectmen just voted at their last meeting, because that's a big factor as to how our employees are gonna get impacted. So we have that information at our next meeting and the last thing will, will be to have the most recent consumer price index. You're biting your tongue. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. Keep okay. <laughs> All right. Keep so I'm going. Not sure if there's any questions. I mean, like I said, there was. I only have the same question that I had for John, if there's enough for like cruiser maintenance. I'm sorry? If you have a rolling average for five years, what are you spending on cruiser maintenance? So you get, you know, your line, you're making the same item, maybe it should be more all the time. Well, it, yeah. It, I know it's going to vary, but I mean, yeah, if it's not it's a not vary. And if it's, it's not hard, you got to tell us. I mean, it's not going up $10,000. It's it's not as, as big of a jump, but again, it's, you know, some years we need to get, tires for all the vehicles and you know, we got a cruiser that's six years 
going on seven years old now. So that's going to start costing more money. Well, it looks like you're spending more every year than what's yes. than what's in there. Yep. So. And that's why you know I tried to go up. You know we had the year we spent twenty seven hundred, so it went up to three thousand the next year. Yep. Um, so that's the climb. Prices are going down. Going back to the salary thing for a second, I get why your salary and the full time officer salary would be to the penny, um, but part time officers is somewhat of a dark throw in terms of making sure you can or what shifts you're going to hit i find it remarkable that you hit that shift coverage exactly knowing that people call in sick and i know that you know shifts aren't always covered um how, how does that happen that to the penny you hit the plan versus action what what happened was as far as the training line that I have on my budget <clears throat> when since we've done the sub accounts um, my error I talked with Brian we, we didn't when I, was, when I do payroll if we have an officer that does say 20 hours worth of ships and then he also has a four-hour training block I haven't been breaking that line item down into the sub account to say okay this much is coming from salary this much is coming from the sub account so I don't really have an, an accurate to the penny figure as far as the, the training goes. So that the money that, I know what I spent in salaries, which, which was 46 in change. I can't remember the exact figure off the top of my head, but so we took the amount from the salaries for the part-time officers and then we just said, okay, the, the difference. When you exhaust that budget, you just slide it into another line. It sounds like yeah, exactly. So you're not, fixing that. Yes. Okay. With the sub accounts, we'll be able yeah. to actually on the payroll. So we know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's the budget. Okay. It's been addressed. Yeah. Okay. How many part-time officers do we have? We currently have eight. Um, yes, eight. We have a, a list of reserve officers that. <clears throat> They're, they don't work shifts or anything like that. Yep. They may do a detail here or there, but mm -hmm. they, just, they don't work shifts. A so full roster is um, eight part-time officers, two full-time officers. So one of our reserve officers is actually filling in, working some shifts for us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where is your detail work reflected in here? Either salary or maintenance? Is Neither that you Neither, that's completely that separate. Like that's paid by the contract, right? whoever, whoever hires us for the detail, whether it's Verizon, Eversource. And you're just, pass pass through. you're just a pass through in terms of the payroll. Correct, yeah, when, when the check comes in for, for the detail, that just gets added to their, their payroll as a separate line on there. It shows up as police detail on the uh, pay stub. So it's a separate. And it's contract work, right? On their pay stub, it's contract work. So it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't hit our if, if somebody was getting close to the, the ceiling on Correct. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely completely separate. But it shows up in your county retirement. For details? Yeah. I I don't believe it does. I don't believe it's calculated. Overtime is, but I don't believe details it. Because if you know if you make forty thousand dollars a year and you do twenty thousand in details, you're not that's on a sixty thousand dollar year as far as your as far as salary. county retirement goes. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. Well I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the state police. You see a lot more people working in details if that was the case. You've had an uptick on the training, uh, even though it's flat from last year, but we look back prior to to that, is is there uh, significantly more training going on in the department the train the training for the uptick in the training kind of follows the the um the salary line item so if there's a, an increase because the training is to pay the officer's salary for in-service training 40 hours a year mm -hmm. so if 
there's a 2% increase, then that line has to increase as well because it's just paying for the salary for that officer. So that's going to continue to go up as long as we're given a cost of living increase. Well. Have you or the department had to um, look into any kind of new training, upcoming training due to the marijuana laws being passed? Or? Um, well, other than our <coughs> regular legal updates as far as in-service goes, yeah. I mean, I, I did a specific class that wasn't part of this. It was at one of our station meetings. I did a, just a lot of block on the new marijuana legislation. Um, it's also part of our legal update, which I conduct for the for our department. So there, there is training, continual training going on as far as the, the marijuana stuff. But it's it's more far reaching than just you know recreational marijuana. Yeah. This is how it applies to operating a motor vehicle under the influence and how do we determine if somebody's under the influence. Those are those are the type of that affects. Any further questions for uh, <coughs> on this one and it's a short one. Uh, they're flying for college courses mm -hmm. since twenty sixteen hasn't been used and as a college professor I feel hurt that no one's taking advantage of that. Is that, that, that was voted by the selectmen. Um, I, I might have been one of the who voted on it. I, I can't give you the year but, but yeah. um, as part of part of the town benefits to provide continued education. Um, but no one takes advantage of it. Well, it's, it's not that no one takes advantage of it. It's continued education if there's funds available for that. Well, and again, 1,200 available. Budgeted. It's budgeted. It is. And so when, when you say when you mean funds available, you mean you really have those in mind for something else, and only if that something else doesn't come up to you have know, college? I mean, I, it's not being spent. So mm. it seems to be funds available, they're available. So, but, so why do you say that only if there's funds available? Well, because sometimes the budget goes over because we go over in you know the cost of the cruiser, so that money is getting yeah. unfortunately allocated for other items in the budget. Well, then we should budget more for the cruiser. Then we should budget yeah. more for the cruiser. You can't you can't take away someone's ability to, to for professional development in whatever way way shape or form just because oh we didn't budget right we're doing stuff. Yeah, it just doesn't. I mean, I can see in one of those years there was actually. Uh, almost two thousand dollars less expended than appropriated and i could see well maybe nobody wanted to take the course but that next year there was that margin was much slimmer and nobody took advantage of that and i don't know for 2018 2019 obviously because i haven't had it yet we're not finished with 2018 um but i just feel sad nobody's that's understandable okay and, and all right so i'll speak out of turn of my one and a half years of experience here <laughs> but th there seems to be a mindset of of trying to level fund your budget and to live within your means so i think that's what is going on with the police department the fire department they're trying to they're trying to live within their means and, and do those types of things so right and we ask them to level fund their budget you know they're doing that and maybe there's a little, little bit a little bit of hesitation to seek out increases in if that's what they're, if the goal is to level yeah. fund and to try to try to operate on um, not limited funds, but live within the means of what you have, I think that's 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 part of that's why it's coming on. And, and I think that's probably reflects in, in maybe maybe John's way of thinking too. He's not here to defend himself, of course, but um, I think that's part of it. You can correct me if I'm wrong. It's just an observation. Yeah. And looking at, I mean, a, the number of years we've had a reduction in the, the budget as well. I mean, this, uh, last year being a good example. I, I, I think we appreciate that they want to, you know, looking to level fund. I mean, and we're looking to find out exactly what they're spending in each category, get a realistic idea of yeah. spending in each category. You can't accurately budget if the line items are just sort of right, if they, fungible. Or it's Right. And that'd be yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's meaningless because, well, if we run out here, we'll just take it from there. We're trying to find out what's being spent in each show. Yeah. Or going to be spent in each yeah. area. Well, we're just for real. Each, each right. But if it's really right. fiction, if it's really fiction, because 
you have you have to like propose a bunch of numbers, but where you actually spend it is going to be different. Well, it's then, there's, then, then the exercise yes. of, of putting up you know numbers in the boxes is a very neat. Yeah, just look at the cruise yeah, maintenance. That's another way I look at it. Yeah. I don't just look at it but, as putting numbers in boxes. No, for the cruiser maintenance particulars was over budget each of the last two years, and you say the cruiser's getting older, so you should be look, yeah. anticipating spending more again this year than well, the 3000 start, Starting last year, we were looking to get a cruiser replaced. So. Cruiser hasn't been replaced. Well, yeah, the cruiser hasn't been replaced, and you're still budgeting yeah. at the same 3000 yeah. that you overspent by. Well, he's hoping to replace it. That's what he's going to talk about yeah. next, right? <laughs> For example, electric oil and heat are consistently under budget. Why don't we just shift those up to cruiser maintenance? You know, right? As, as I see, as, you know, oil and heat is always budgeted up, you know, around. I think around that two has months. to do with market price of heat. Yeah, it's, it's not always because we're already at, we're already right. over a thousand dollars this year. But we reduced it by five hundred because there was a discussion last but, year. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We're probably going to be over in that line this year. Because we're already at a thousand dollars. True, but then just because we we don't have actuals yet for the for that year. But just look at the ones where we do have budget and actual. Those ones are consistently over. Very sorry, they're consistently under the the, the mm -hmm. what we appropriate is is more than what we actually yep. use. Which is what we talked about last year, reducing it a little and bit. It dropped at 500 last year. It dropped one of them 500 last year, yep. but not the other, which is actually electricity is pretty <clears> steady. Um, I guess I'm trying to find a little more meaning in this than maybe I should. Maybe I should just. I think also as props that we'd love to be able to go back five years rather than two and compare the actuals and the. Yeah, the five year picture would be, would, would, would be helpful. But, you know, once again, these guys have things to do far beyond. I wonder how much, how much budget. Can we budget. do that? It's available. Yeah. Right. Well, right. Right. well, I mean, <laughs> we do it every year. So Bobby and I just had a little sidebar here. We beat these guys up every time they come in here, right? Over two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred bucks here and there. And the school, the school committee comes in, <coughs> just rubber stamp it, and say you're good to go. You know, right. so I'm I trying, trying to beat him yeah. up. I'm trying. No, I'm, I'm just that's just a phrase, I'm, I, and I'm not. I'm not complaining. I do the same thing. Last year I was going to beat him up over a taser. You know, but I look at the big. I look at the big right. picture, saying, "We'll we'll put the school committee in front of us, and we'll just smile at each other and rubber snap." Rubber oh, I've stand never seen that happen. But yeah. um, it happen that's, last year. <laughs> no, I I understand what Joyce Joyce is saying. Yeah. It would be nice if this was a tool, right. more yeah, of right. a tool. Right. Than what it is currently, but I think, and I, I think that's, I think that's I'm just going to take. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I think it's just going to take time, and it's going to take us and them <clears throat> wanting that. Well, it's, it's it's consistency too with what we talked about last week. The forms all being the same. How far, you know? That's all these things. You know, this has been years of people just putting their own ideas together. We had a gentleman in here at our last meeting saying he's got all this stuff. What do whatever you want, and it's going to be consistent. Go, we can tell them want to go back five years or three years or whatever. I think it just makes it a lot easier to manage these departments. And I, I do appreciate you know what you're saying about yeah. I mean, why aren't we more accurate with it? And they're saying, well, if I get more accurate, then sometimes if something comes up, I'm not going to have any money to. He was accurate with his taser last year, and you guys just about rolled him out on a rail. Oh, I, exactly. That's yeah. what I'm. That's so, what I'm saying. I was so, the one that. Yeah, I was which the one way you want to go? Right. I mean, I, I slapped him bad last year. I was ready to come back and ask him this year, why are we asking for that 2,500 bucks back when we've already spent the 1,200 dollars on the taser? So it's actually a 3,700 dollar increase that you're looking for instead of a, you know. <laughs> so we can play that game all day long. It's a shell game. That's all that is. You know, just move the numbers. I'm not going to tell him what to spend his money. A lot of it is anyway. You know that. Right. Um, in regards to this budget that's in front of you right now, are there any? Final thoughts or uh, comments, questions for the chief. No. No. All right, very good. Um, chief, is uh, there may be another wish list to get? Well, we, we discussed at the last meeting. Just I went through the, the cruiser the capital yeah. item for the yeah. cruiser. We discussed that more. I, that was just like for it because it was all line items. <coughs> was to do it. But it didn't cost. It's good. So capital planning is 
feels comfortable with everything he's provided. The information he's presented. Yeah. Okay, and where's capital planning standing on it? I can't speak to the rest. Okay, so that hasn't. We only had one meeting. So you've only had one meeting since. Okay. They only had one meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Period. Just Just right, right. right. Okay. All we can do is come up with what we have to work with at that time. Yeah. Right. Presented to this okay. board. That's right. All right. Okay. All right. So that's back in our court. Um, yeah. No, it's not in our court. It's still in theirs. Well, it is still still in theirs, but um, I think we didn't we leave it that we wanted to see what our budget situation was going to look like. No. You know, he was on he was on track. You know, we were in this mm -hmm. five year replacement mm -hmm. cycle and, and all that. But we just needed to see where we were going to. With, with our cycle based right. on whether the capital committee was comfortable with the information that they had received and yeah, you're right. yada, yada, yada. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were going to take a look at it towards the end of the, the, the season and see whether we could fit that in there. Let, let me ask Dan, at the capital planning committee, I'm a member of that as well, uh, we ranked the, the projects that were submitted. Did, did our ranking go to finance committee? Yes. Anybody else? Yeah, okay, so they say that they know what was presented. I don't think we've seen it. That's the request. That's our, our ranking. Now, I don't know how far yeah, we can pass to our finance, I guess. And so has, has finance accepted that? Priority ranking that the capital approval planning committee submitted? Yes. Wow. No, I think we just talked about it. I, I, talked talked about it. I don't think we go through a formal process, Fred, of um, <laughs> accepting or, or not. We, we have a discussion about it. And, yeah. you know, for instance, the fire, uh, John's uh, command vehicle, you know, that was. Uh, that was something that came up for us in capital planning. They talked about it a little bit, but we realized that there just wasn't enough information. They couldn't make a decision on it. And so we asked John to come back here and continue that process of updating us on where we were. So we're farther along with that, but there, obviously there's no decision yet uh, in terms of the recommendation. And I kind of think we're in the same same slot here with the uh, with the cruiser because um, I don't think we've, we've moved ahead and haven't had another meeting with this is um, um, maybe maybe we should look at, at uh, when we do our last or next to last meeting when we actually uh, yeah, approve or disapprove mm -hmm. all of our articles. Yep. Yeah. In other words, the finance committee should go ahead and the cruisers there put their cruiser in or whatever, and then let capital planning review and change their from no decision to we agree. Because to a that one. We, we only have one meeting and, and right. we never yeah. have a chance for any mm -hmm. rebuttal, which this committee has every we're getting, we get all the rebuttal. Yeah, we get the rebuttal. Is, is the capital planning committee going to meet again? Or do they have plans to meet no. again? No. Yeah. Our, our, the way it's been always done is only one meeting a year. So if we don't have the full information at that meeting, we can't approve it. You know, say, yeah, let's go for it. And maybe it, once it goes through this, through the actual budget process, if we find money's enough to do what we want to do, as far as putting it in, in perspective of being recommended by a capital planning committee, which would go on the town, town right. articles, right. then maybe we should invite them back for that meeting. For that meeting, for so that, that they can get on, on board with it. Are the, have the selectmen been brought up to date with the cruiser? Um, the whole it's been a picture. While it's, it's been on the agenda. Okay, well, it's probably not a bad idea then to for you guys to hear what he wants, why he wants it, and why he feels we need it <coughs> based on 
what we have. Okay, so as far as the cruiser goes, the current cruiser that we have now is a, a 2013 Ford sedan, which we purchased late 2012. So it was up for replacement last year, which is put on, as soon as we purchase the cruiser, it gets put on for replacement in five years. <coughs> That's the, the plan that we tried to, to come up with, but it hasn't really stuck. <coughs> so it got deferred last year. Um, comes up again this year. It's just got more mileage, more maintenance that's being done on it. And then, you know, coming to the Capital Planning Committee, it's getting deferred again this year. So this year, I went and actually got a quote for the cruiser, which is detailed. I'm not sure if it's in the information that they have in front of them right now, no. but it's a detailed we quote. It last week. A detailed quote that breaks down every, the price of the cruiser, as well as every piece of equipment on the cruiser. Everything's itemized on that, on that quote. And the final cost is 44,000, uh, it's just over 44,000. We put in for the capital plan for 45,000 for the purchase of the cruiser. That would be a hybrid electric vehicle cruiser, correct? Yeah. A what? Uh, hybrid electric. Yeah. Yeah. Forty four eighty seven. You want your vehicle? Forty four eight seven. Eight seventy eight. Forty five thousand. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the quote that we have. So that's the total cost of the cruiser to be able to drive it out of the off the lot to be able to use it. It's a frontline cruiser, the one that we're looking at uh, getting. It's gonna take the Ford sedan that we have, take that off the front line, so the new cruiser will go on to the front line. What I mean by front line is that cruiser gets used for um, 80 hours per week. That's the number of um, ships that that's covering, that, that the cruiser's being used for. So the plan, we had also discussed taking that cruiser, the, the sedan cruiser, off the front line, and at this point, it's not, to the point where you know where you get to stick your foot out the door to, to stop it, but it's it's getting to the point where we're maintaining it more. And there's bigger things that are going to be happening to it. So if we can take that off the front line, my hope is that we can take that off the front line and kind of have that as a detail car mm -hmm. or a car that we could take for training, things like that. Just use it as a, a regular vehicle, which would hopefully alleviate some of the wear and tear that might go on to the additional wear and tear that would go on to the, the frontline car. Because if we need to use a, a cruiser for a detail, it's one of the frontline cars that are getting used. Um, if we have to go to training, it's one of the frontline cars that are getting used. So to, to kind of keep that cruiser, and we tried it last year with the Chevy, that went behind the station, it got parked there, there was some repairs that had to be made out of it, out of, to the cruiser, that didn't come out of town funds, that came out of cruiser repair account that we have, which is funded by the cruiser detail account, which is what the contractors pay. We charge a fee for using the cruiser for, for details. So repairs are made from that account. Um, unfortunately, that plan didn't work out because now we have exhaust problems. We've had um, radiator, we had to replace the radiator, so there's some other problems where we're, we're not getting any really use out of that other car. So there's a possibility to auction that car, sell the car off like we did the, the last cruisers that we had. The last cruisers that we had, we probably got four or $500 um, a piece for each one of those cars. So it's not a, a huge sum of money. It's not gonna really do much to offset anything. So to try to squeeze a little bit more life out of it as a non frontline cruiser, that's what we'd be looking to do. Again, if it gets put off this year, this will be the second time It'll be seven years old. It's currently got 130,000 130, miles. 135. Um, so by time this fiscal year ends, it's going to have more miles. By time next fiscal, it could have close to 170,000 miles on the on the car. As far as cruisers go, and the like cruisers, that's well beyond the, so, the effective use of it. I, I guess I, I have a point for question. I think for, in terms of the driving to training, I gotta be honest, I, I think people can take their own cars to drive to training. 
that just might they're they're not on duty they're driving to training they can take their own car and, and, and submit for for their mileage reimbursement um but the question i have is in cruiser maintenance you, you talk about increased maintenance costs <clears throat> in fiscal 16 you spent 47.54 and then it dropped to 36.86 in fiscal 17. we must have a year to date for the current fiscal year in terms of the maintenance costs so far it's just so, over three thousand right now <clears throat> so it's just over three thousand right now and we're and we're pushing eight months into the fiscal year that's in line close with what we spent last year maybe a little bit higher than what we spent last year so that doesn't tell me that it's going up dramatically over where it's been and for some reason i don't know whether fiscal 16 was an anomaly because it was 4754 with two new cruisers fiscal 16 at the was that the old one? one was the tag new tires, we didn't have to buy tires for it. Yeah, but when was the when was the, the SUV gone? That was 17. Was that 2017? Okay, okay. So I, I, I guess I don't see a huge uptick in, in maintenance. But what are you waiting for that to happen though, John? Yeah, that's that's the whole that's the whole idea behind it is we've we've had when you look at the budget for Cruiser maintenance. I can only budget for the things that I that I know. Those, those are oil changes to the basic maintenance, tires, oil changes, things like that. I can't budget for a transmission, for an exhaust, for you know those things are two thousand twenty five hundred dollars. Those are the only things left to go on this car. There's already a, just last week talking with the officers we had a station meeting asking if there's any issues with the cruisers, knowing that we're discussing it. Um, everybody's complaining about a smell of antifreeze whether it's coming from the heater core, whether it's coming from, you know, it's being burned off somewhere. Is it a Ford? I don't know. It is. Oh, remember they had that, that, that exact car had that problem not long ago, and they had a recall on it. was a newer one. That's coming on high side. He's talking about the old one. Oh, he's talking about the old one. Okay. Carbon high side. Yeah. Anyway. But, yeah. Anyway. But the, the, I guess the, the thing that, that concerns me some is, okay, now you have three vehicles and you're looking for a fourth vehicle. And last year, at this oh, meeting, see, we, no, we no, talked, no. Wait, wait a minute, yeah. let me finish. Let me finish my thought. The, the, the last, no, you're gonna have four vehicles. The last year we talked about this, the new vehicle was to replace a vehicle. And that vehicle wasn't replaced and we got into a discussion of what does the word replace mean? Is it being sell it at auction block or, or put it on the side and, and fix it until you need it? And I, I guess you <coughs> used the interpretation to put it on the side, fix it for detailed work. So you had three vehicles that, that you were responsible for. Correct. And, and it comes back to the, the issue of, I think if Jonathan alluded to it, do you need that third vehicle for detailed work? If you don't use it for detail, then each police officer uses his own personal vehicle and he gets compensated for that and it's it's a wash i guess for the police department there's no responsibility for his vehicle whereas now with your third vehicle you're responsible for maintaining that town ins pays insurance on it and whatever else to keep that third vehicle running it's it comes down to a matter of you know do we have three vehicles for a police department or two if the third one's only used occasionally, is it worth keeping that, that third one at the expense of, also the maintenance expense on that third one? Well, the maintenance expense doesn't come from the town. That's that's the big thing to look at. Okay. That's not that's not coming out of my maintenance budget. No, but that's part of justification for a new vehicle is to increase maintenance. So it, on well, the town budget, it, it comes out of that. And I realize that if you buy a new one, hopefully the maintenance is a lot less. So right. and if we have a big ticket item like a transmission or a yeah. exhaust, then we just don't basically scrap it. So well, I think I think is what he wants to do with this vehicle that has the hundred and thirty five thousand is good. It'll be put to good use. It will keep our frontline vehicle in town, in use. 
Well, you're still going to have three vehicles. You're going to well, get rid of that his house. Yeah. 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 Replace You'll still that. have three, but I think it, if he implements this with a vehicle that is worthy of it, then it is going to save our frontline cruiser for that type of detail, and it will be able to keep it here in town and either instead of laying a guy off for a day or putting him on the special duty. Well, yeah, didn't you, you, you prove that this doesn't work, this third vehicle? His last vehicle didn't work because it fell apart before he yeah, did this. Well, this, so this is an exhaust. I know why he really wants to get this replaced now so it will be usable for a while. <coughs> for a while. Okay. Forever. I don't think we should be calling it a replacement vehicle. Maybe you're, you're well, adding another well, vehicle to the fleet. You're adding it's another vehicle. It's replacing well, it as a frontline car. Yeah. Replacing yeah. them. It's replacing it for a use. It's not, not a frontline car. car. You're not going to four vehicles. You're going to go to three vehicles. Yeah. Right? So you're not really adding it's it. It's going to get rid of the junk one that's behind the station. Yeah. I don't even know if it runs. I have no idea. It does run. It sounds like a tank. It's, it leaks. Yeah. It's, it leaks. Mm -hmm. it's, you can't use it. Come on. It's not going to sit on a detail idling for eight hours. Okay. Uh, let's say go right. like that. I, I think generally, I, I think we all have an idea of yeah. what the situation yeah. is. Um, it'll be on the, uh, it'll certainly be part of the final discussion. And, um, you know, if we need to come back and hash this again, we'll actually come back and we'll do it again. Uh, so, outside of any further questions for the chief, anybody? Uh, yeah, they gave us a lot of information there. And at some point, I started counting cars. I counted up to five, so I really didn't get all your information right. But my understanding is you have a frontline vehicle. Two frontline vehicles. Two frontline vehicles. Frontline vehicles. Two frontline vehicles. Okay, that makes some things make more sense. And you have, right now, that's all we have. Correct. And then one and we is have a, a, sitting out back. Well, something you said, like, I bet, like a smelly pile of rust that we're not paying insurance on. Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. It's still registered. But it's, but it's it doing be. nothing. Huh? It's sure. so, it is. It's not doing anything. It shouldn't be. Then that's a pro I feel like if that's, well, I guess that's a sideline to my main. If that's just costing us money and doing nothing, we should give it to And that's, that's, I think, something that is very you, you'll know how you know how to do that. Um, if we go to having three vehicles, and one of the reasons is, well, if somebody wants to do a detail, they need a car to do that. My question is about uh, how much is the town paying so that officers have the freedom to do a detail? Yeah. Well, the town's not paying anything. Not if, we're if we're, if we're supplying, the people. But if, we, the if we need to keep, excuse me, John, if we need to keep two or three cars insured and maintained so that they can go out there oh, I, with these I cars, see. we're paying for other people to do details and like building up this fleet. You're saying one of the reasons, oh, then this third car can go out on on, on details. I think. That's okay, maybe, I don't know. But we shouldn't have our frontline cars going out on details. If, if mileage on those and use of those is actually something that we're paying for in terms of shorter life of those vehicles, then why are we sending frontline vehicles out to do details? That, and we, which is really not outside, that's kind of outside of what our police department is paid to do. Those are things so that police officers can have a better wage Right, because it gives them the chances. To, I'm not against that, but I, I don't think that's where our frontline vehicles ought to be deployed. And if there's going to be a third vehicle that's really just devoted to doing details, then it sounds like you have a way of paying for the regular maintenance on those, but maybe that ought to extend to like licensing and insurance on a, on a vehicle that's really just being used for details. Do you understand what I mean? Like that sort of, and maybe I don't understand the whole system. I'm completely aware that uh, there's plenty of holes in my knowledge of what's going on. Um, and, and I think it's a good idea for us to have you know, cruisers that work um, for the things that we want a police department to do for the town. Um, but I'm not sure that details falls into that. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe other people feel differently, but um, that's, that's all I wanted to, to, to say about 
some of my um, understanding and perhaps misunderstanding of, of what cars are doing. Well, as far as as far as details goes, in cruiser use on details. Um, that adds an extra layer of safety for the crew and the officers. So if we could have a cruiser there, that's kind of the preferred, the preferred thing, um, because of the hazards. If you want to give, be able to give people the advanced wear, um, advanced notice oh, no, I, with I'm signs, not, and then they see flashing that lights. And have a cruiser, and maybe when you do need a cruiser to be on a detail, but if that's putting an additional cost on the town, then that might have to be. We might have to reconsider what. Or what's being charged for using a cruiser on a detail? Do you understand what I mean? The only charge of the extras that's coming on the town is registration. You don't have registrations. I'm not sure it's what the insurance charge is. Insurance, insurance and, and fuel. Oh, well, there's fuel, and then there's like the the, the the shortened life of the vehicle because it's sitting out there running while they're running a detail. You don't sit, it doesn't sit there not being, it's not sitting there with the keys out, right? Mm -hmm. It's sitting there running, these guys are always running. So that's additional, you know, essentially miles on that on the engines. So, and so it, anyways, it seems to me there's a, there's a cause to think maybe that should be separated. I don't really know how practical that is. And the, if it can't really be uh, separated out for use, then maybe, we have to think of another way to compensate for that in terms of what gets charged when our cruiser goes out for a detail. Does that make sense? I feel like I didn't say that very articulately, but. Well, I think that, you know, and I, and I agree with everything you're saying, but let's not use this yeah. detail as a reason yeah. not to get the new cruiser. But I, I think, yeah, we the, pol the, we I think the policy right. thing, maybe that we say, our, we have a policy that says we don't, use frontline vehicles for for detail work or, or whatever, whatever you know i mean I, and i don't know what it is but i know that we've we've deferred this already we've all agree, somewhat agreed that for this vehicle that he's asking for that five years was the was, well we're going to be going to seven so how do we get back on track here and i don't i think we get off track by looking at it saying We've got three vehicles there already, and we've got. I, I just think it really muddies the waters uh, quite a bit when we when we do that. I think we should really take a look at what the you know. That's just my two cents on on that. But I just like yeah. I just, okay. And I added that because I know it was a topic of discussion, and people asking, well, "What are you going to do with that cruiser?" And so just adding it as a this is this is what we're looking at. instead of throwing it away. We're throwing it away, or you know, auctioning it off, or. Well, for the safety of the town, for the safety of the town, what you're asking for, for in that new cruiser, is something you feel, as the chief, would meet those needs. Absolutely. Okay. And not having that new cruiser, safety of the town, may be less in that case. It might be safety of the town, safety of the officers. Have to I think the other, other thing to think about, maybe not this meeting, maybe personnel committee is the place, is the perception. People have a perception, you have three vehicles, you only have two full-time officers, why do you need the third vehicle? There's that perception in town that it's an extra expense. Yeah. So it, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't support what you're trying to do, Jim, I think. People are thinking that you're spending money not necessary. I'm not arguing you're not doing yep. that, but it's just that perception out there because you have that. But this three, the, um, Fred, the three vehicle is not going to be an ongoing thing. I, I think well, I that's just happening. It sounds like it is. Yeah. If there's it sounds like if the one cycle at the most. If the car is able to do that. Well, there's still, uh, okay, but that's, that's the, the, and we just so happen to have a car now that's able to do that. Well, still, you, regardless, you don't know downstream if that's going to still hold true. No, but I think still, regardless of whether you have a car or not, or the condition of that car or not, there's still that perception out there. Yeah. I'm just telling you what people are telling and in my, and in my opinion, if, and, if we had a third car that we could use as yeah. a frontline car, we wouldn't be using one car for 80 hours a week. We'd be using three cars each running. Why are we using yeah. one car for eight? What's your total shift? 120 hours we cover per week. So one car is 80 and one car is 40? Correct. Right. 
It's cars 40. It's cars yes. 40. My car is 40. Because you're the other full time officer. Our evenings are in the week, he's 40. And then our weekend shifts are in the Okay. Okay. We beat this thing back. Okay. All right. That's it. Any further questions? Thoughts? No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Keep your last. All right. Sorry. But. We got to find it. Yep. How's that? Um, hold on. Is everybody just say class or key? Right after where you work. Ah! You feel safe back there. I got it. So you, you can hear me from here. I can hear you. Go for it. Go for it. All right. On the highway salaries, again, just like was discussed before, there's been vir virtually no changes there because the personnel committee hasn't done their recommendations. Um, the only thing that has been done, because it's definitely known, is that one of the longevity due to retiring is no longer, so that drops down $250. Um, so instead of 750, it's down to 500 for the request. Moving on to general highways, um, uniforms, the first line there is up $100 um, for my request this year. Um, I'll just quickly go through, our, go through them all, the three, Equipment rental, that one I'm keeping at level funded. The next one on there is street sweeping. Um, dropping at another $500 um, as since we have made the transition of not putting sand on the paved roads, um, we've drastically reduced uh, the amount of sweeping. Um, we've dropped it approximately $5,000 since in the last three years. Um, we still have to do minimal amount of sweeping here and there, so that's why I still need some money in there. Um, uh, as, as time goes on, last year we expended 1285. I may, you know, going forward, even in the next fiscal year, I may be able to to tweak that down a little bit more. I'll see as time goes on, but you can see that's drastically been reduced. The street sweeping. That one's a little unique in the aspect that um, we had last year with the my county bids, I had a company out of Rhode Island that um, bid, eight, his price was $87.50 per hour. Um, previously, the year before that, we were spending about $180 per hour, which is about $100 an hour less. That person, did you get what you paid um, for? It was actually a, it was actually a good. Which line are you talking about, Keith? I'm on catch basin. Catch basin cleaning. I'm sorry. Okay. Catch basin cleaning. Okay. Um, I re, uh, that one. The the issue there again. The company we had out of Rhode Island last fiscal year. I only had to pay eighty seven fifty per hour. This year, the fiscal year that I'm in right now, when I do my Catch basin cleaning is 185 per hour. So um, it was a court that company that did it realized they got into something they shouldn't have been in. They did a good job, but I'm assuming they lost money on it because they had they got to pay prevailing wages, and I don't think they did their own work when they when they, they did it. When they did. So that's why I'm not. Even though when you look at what I spent. In there with the catch basin cleaning I spent last year 1925 I'm still um, requesting I'm not dropping it drastically um, we still all also have even though we don't have sand on the road we still get a lot of organics leaves and, and things of that nature that go into the catch basins and they have to be cleaned out so um, on to um, oil and stone that I'm leaving at level funded Blacktop um, drastically high um, in fiscal 17 expended. 
That's because we did some leveling on Long Plain Road and Shimming, which is, um, I was not able to use Chapter 90 money on to do that kind of work because Chapter 90 requires me to put the, the blacktop down three quarters of an inch minimum thickness and we just wanted to go in and do some to do some minor leveling in there before that got chip sealed. So, um, so again, I'm leaving that level funded for this fiscal year request. Cold patch is up $100. Um, the price per ton has gone up a little bit. The process gravel, uh, last fiscal year I spent $89.56, so I've upped that to reflect what was spent last year by $500. And then the remaining items are all pretty much, um, remain, they're all being level funded from what I had in there. And so does anybody have any questions on the general highway section? My only question for you is that shouldn't the, and I get personnel hasn't done what they do. I was gonna quote Blazing Saddles, but I forgot the quote. Um, but the second operator, that salary should go down in this fiscal year because of the more junior member. Yeah, it, that is correct. And that, I think that when we actually get the numbers, I'll reflect that. I, I just brought everything across. Because they won't get, a, he won't get a call. Correct. Right, right. okay. Well, it'll be, and the rates, well, that, will be, that will be correctly reflected once. Right, and there'll be less than, the the request here. yes right right correct right uh, I said the the traffic painting yeah okay line is was that partially to offset I, the, that's another the I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't um, explain that as much as I wanted to um, one of the things that happened there is we went a fiscal year there was one fiscal year where I didn't do the entire town. And one of the things, that, and I'm not quite sure how at the, how this is going to work out, but definitely because we're not putting the sand on the road, the sand is very abrasive and grinds up, grinds the paint off. Um, I'm going to try to do line painting every other year as far as all the maintenance. So the year that what you see there, where we had 1,086 in FY17, that was that was what was spent on new work where we repaved the road and had to paint it. But we didn't paint the whole town that during that fiscal year. Um, so far, this fiscal year of 18, I had to do the whole town. We already have done that. And that cost was $7,444. That was what was spent in, two, in fiscal 18 already. I don't know how to budget it if I'm gonna be in a position where Going forward, if I can skip next year, I'm not going to just paint it just because. I will, I will, you know, turn the so, money back so, in. And, and, and so, so that, that, that line was, is going to have a natural. That's what it might be. I'm going to, you know, again, uh, unless it's something that's never happened before, because usually we can't, by the time a year later comes by, the lines are almost invisible. You have to go out and remark them. That's how bad it used to be. But that's another benefit we're finding from the from not putting the sand on that the line painting lines are staying there tremendously better. I think what you might have to do, Keith, is do like a bite the bullet one year to do half the town, spend that half, and then so you're you're rotating yeah, every other. Yeah, maybe I could maybe try that. You know, yeah, because you the budgets in half, yeah, but you still cut cut the budget in half and do half. That's, the a, town. that's a possibility. I'll, and and as I go forward, if it. It turns out that we do are able to go every other year. That's what I'll do. I'll break it in half and just do half the time each year. You can get the contractor to do that. It, it would still be the same price. Yeah. Yes. Per per lane mile. Correct. So yeah, that's a good way we can handle that. Good. That way I won't have the spikes yeah. up and down. Yeah. Okay. Um, on to. <coughs> with the roads, again, the, the personnel part of the, the, the 
salary aspect of it. That why do we just, break? Why do we break your salary out to winter roads? Um, it, it's been that way always, um, primarily because if the roads we and roads. when we ever get into really nasty winters, it gives the ability to declare an emergency out of your winter roads. And there's years where I have come back to the finance committee and saying we need to declare or go to the board of select and they declare an emergency and we can deficit spend that account. My understanding with the meeting that we had earlier about uh, overtime and comp time was that you had a lot of comp time based on winter cleanups. So I'm assuming that you're not getting paid for that, you know, what I'm saying, of overtime because you're taking it as comp time. There's virtually so why nobody would you that's the only. They're only the salary. The only every hourly employee may, and it's usually I bet you not more than ten or fifteen hours a year that they'll ask for it to be in comp. I was talking about you in particular. I'm a salary, so that you're not paying. Right. So that's why I don't know why we would have to come back and ask for more money if we're not if you, why your salary would be in there. Oh, I, I, I guess, I guess I see what you're saying. It could be, but no, because he's not getting paid. I believe it, it helps that it was. Yeah, that's not, it's not being explained, right? I, I mean, right. But what, the, what could be done want. would be, we could put all of our, all of the basically 40 hours into the highway salary account and then just leave an overtime account in the Winter, Winter Rose account, we could do that. I was just more curious why, because I, I know your salary, so why it, it gets broken out at the Winter Rose. I, I actually think Keith's, the, I, I agree with you, and I think Keith's solution is a good one, just make the Winter Roads the, an overtime account. Right. Again, it's, it's just more- and I don't care what it is, it's plus materials. The only sure. thing that it'll, that would cause is it will cause a little bit more internal paperwork, which, just means that that's your problem, not ours. No, <laughs> but I'm just saying. Then, you're, then the person that's doing payroll is going to have to keep track. Of, instead of right now, it, when we go into Winter Road, which is usually December first till April, is when the so you pull it, it out of that. If if I'm having to jockey it back and forth, it's going to take me a little bit more time, and it's certainly going to take the the office staff here doing payroll more time because now they're going to have to be juggling between different accounts. So the salary is divided proportionally by months. Yes. I have 18 weeks yeah. out of winter roads and 34 out of, out of my house. Right. That's how it has always been, been like that for as long as I can remember. That's a good reason not to change it. <laughs> yeah. I thought it had more to do with that we could you can technically overspend well, with right. the roads. Yes, and that's what I can, yes. again, that's why I'm saying if you want to change it a little bit, at least leave the overtime in the winter down. roads. Because yeah, if you have a, a, a horrendous yeah. winter where the overtime spikes through the roof and you don't have it in highway salary account, yeah, you can't, you can't, can't spend it. it. Right. Right. But in the winter road account, like you it can. is right now, you can declare an emergency and worry about fixing it later. Yeah. That's how just, it is. Just don't look at that superintendent's pay. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. I look at it. I, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Keith. Go. Um, on to the material section. Um, I am leaving things, you know, pretty much. I, I up the salt by a thousand. Other than that, I'm leaving things pretty much um, where they're at, um, and so that's where I'm at with the winter roads. Um, okay. Machinery, it's the same. Again, winter roads. It's it's such a it's such a variable. Uh, I, it's very tough to ever make a accurate budget because you just don't know what you're going to get for. For storms, um, onto road machinery. Um, again, as I sit here and listen to the other questions about the other departments, and, and I can certainly say that in my case, I've been able to pretty much level fund for the last three years. One of the things that is going to catch up to me, right, 
fairly soon is the fact that we've purchased my main dump trucks, which I have a, a 2012, a 15, and a 17. So, so as as time's gone on, I in the last few years, my my expenditures have been pretty um, pretty level, but. Starting, I can foresee that in the future years that I will not be able to keep that level. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why when you look at it, someone might say, well, geez, how come you haven't had any increases really in the last three or five, five years? And that's because we've been buying new equipment. So even though some of the other older vehicles, does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. okay. so that's why I think when going back to all the other parts, it's important to so that's, you know, to look at the cycles that we're on. Yes. Just not just say we can get by another year mm -hmm. because it just catches up. Well, know. there's a big difference between spending 16,700 and whatever, or 650, or spending 160,000 for a truck. Well, that's the you thing is we, we need to take a look at what the yeah. real number is. Somebody right. has to take a look at what the real yeah. number is. Is it every right. five years and every 10, mm -hmm. yeah. every 20? 12, whatever it is, 15. On my trucks, we're, we try to use a 15 as a, yeah. as a cycle. Uh, I'm to garage maintenance. Before we oh, yep. go into that, I guess I, I don't really see the need for the fine breakdown you have. Uh, I'd suggest putting it in as you want to call a road machinery category, vehicle maintenance and repairs, and put the total in. Why yeah, do we need I mean, to know what you spend on I, oil I, and I, yeah. fluid? Unless you need it for your own. No, I, I it's, it was again. It's been that way. It's. Been that way for it's forever. that way forever, and so you just go with it. And, and, but you make a valid point that it, uh -huh. we don't need any. That we didn't. We didn't it's easier for you, like 55 easier for you to keep track of your budget. Why divide right. it six different ways? Put it as one item. Been that way for 20. Well, I mean, a, a good example is you know the the line item on antifreeze, for yeah. instance. I there was a time where the vehicles, the for whatever reason, you. You had a lot more problems with it, antifreeze-wise. Now, now that's a non-event. You usually don't have those kind of problems, so that's why I'm not having to buy antifreeze here, like I used to have. So, but that's a good point. I mean, make clean it up and just make it vehicle maintenance. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, fine. the other the other departments I don't see that police or fire. I don't know if they, they break it down that much. Yeah. So, I'm a kid's a good guy. On to the garage maintenance. Um, my electricity um, dropped that down. Uh, certainly have seen a little bit of reduction by the new lights that were put in. Um, Is that why you're forecasting? Uh, I mean, that's a pretty good decrease in percentage. I mean, well, again, you, uh, you know, I spent in in seventeen. I spent a little over, just over two thousand. So I. I requested just a little over what I spent. Yeah. See what happens. Um, in regards to the phone and internet, that's up quite a bit because now I have um, the new town phone system, which I have to I have to pay for the provider for the phone, which um, is what's what the whole town is going to with the voice over internet. And the other thing, my heating oil um, dropped that a little bit more because I, you know, wasn't spending fifteen hundred dollars. So I had spent seven hundred and sixty-three and seventeen. So I dropped that a little bit. And the other two, everything else was remaining the same there. On to the last page under the tree department only two sections there I up the, the contracting by $500 because uh, reflecting the increase that I'm having to pay so that $500 increase will get me the same amount of hours mm -hmm. with a contractor as previously all right um, final thoughts any more questions for uh, Keith on Summer roads, highway road, uh, winter roads. Um, <coughs> well, you did a good job. Yep. That's the Absolutely. status of Haydenville Road. Absolutely. Haydenville Road right now is um, still in the, the design phase. They under the.
transportation improvement program. The state of Massachusetts is paying for the design. And once we get that, then we go to the next step of actually you know, funding for the construction. The construction cost will come through the Franklin County um, tip. Yeah, there's a tip, but um, each each county or each regional planning agency is allocated a certain amount of money per year. So um, that basically will make major repairs and improvements from the town line all the way back to the Masterson Road, roughly. Right. And how about um, how about uh, Williamsburg Road? Williamsburg Road bridges are under design. Bridges under design right now. Um, that it, it bureaucracy just amazes me how it's so fast <laughs> But if you had asked me three or four months ago, I would have said it was definitely going to be constructed in 2018. I'm, I haven't given up on that, but it's just. By the time you know the engineers take and send things to Mass Highway yeah. for review, it, things don't happen fast, and it's frustrating. But it's, it's not like we really have a you don't have any a lot of control on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get it moving, but but it is on track. To, it will be done, and that road will be reopened to traffic. Um, does anybody have any questions in regards to the capital stuff? The, the roof. I had the, um, yep. the roof on there. Um, presently, the cold side, which is in heat, is the only side that has has a leak in it. But that's not a big problem at, at the moment. Um, they, you, we you certainly the barrel, no. It's just drips on the floor. It's fine. It's concrete works. floor. Um, the you know we certainly have gotten our our life out of it got over 30 years out of the shingles that are on it now. Um, it is the second layer of shingles that are on it. The first, the building was built in 1960. So um, each each cycle that, because uh, I think it was 84 or five that the building was re-shingled. So it, um, each, you know, they got, we've gotten our life expectancy out of each yeah. course of shingles. So. So you go with shingles again, or are you going to go with metal roof on? At this point in time, the, right. the cheapest way out was to just strip it and re-shingle it. Yeah. Um, right. That will also, the 25000 that will also allow me to, um, many places the fascia boards are up, like under the gutters and stuff, are totally rotted out, and they, they need to be replaced. And Part of that is when you replace that, that's got to be done before the drip edge can go on for the roof. That'll all get done in conjunction, and then then all that can get painted. There's no sense in trying to do any painting on it, anything until that fascia boards get replaced, um, and then we can go about trying to spruce the the appearance of the building up from from painting aspects. Um, the other thing that I have on there, uh, my Toro lawnmower. I was trying to be nice a year ago when I, I said we could defer it. Well, we made it into this this fiscal year and had a major um, component with the drivetrain sheared the, for whatever reason, the, the drive motor sheared the shaft and cost me uh, about $700 to replace that. Um, thinking that thing's probably not worth much more than $1,500 even if it was in good shape. So. Um, the, the drive pump is not, it did damage to that, but we were able to limp by and I'm hoping that, you know, if that yeah. appropriation comes, I'm not going to spend any more money on it. Um, and uh, there's, wow, for the five. One, one uh, there, the, the other thing that I did defer this year was we had a, um, we had the, um, mower, a new sickle bar mower. Um, presently, we've had to do some major work on the one I do have, but I do feel that 
it can go another year. So I am, I, I'm, I am recommending that get deferred. And then, as Tom just said, the last thing I had was the plow on my 550. Um, it, the fatigue on it, uh, it, it's just, we had some major, major problems last year and even more already this year where we had to do some, a lot of welding on it and it's just weld after weld in. So uh, that is definitely, um, that plow will not last, that current plow will not last the life of the trunk. Just can't make it. Um, can we get a better plow next time? Is it um, yeah, that's something that might be you know look try to look into um, to get something a little bit more, spend more money in the next time we purchase a new truck. Because right now, what I'm only looking at doing is buying the blade port, you know, the, the front <coughs> portion of it. Part. It's not gonna it's not gonna touch the the way all the mounting parts and all the electrical and all that stuff. So basically, all I'm looking at the replace is just the the, the push arms and the front blade. Yeah. What's the cost of the roof? Twenty five thousand. Yeah, twenty five. And that's that would that's the sh they have to strip the shingles. Yeah, no, I I just it's and. Yeah, you know, just it's the number of years that we have left in that building. That's yeah. Done. Well, again, it you know as <laughs> you were involved, we you know, oh, know. We did have we did take a look at it, and while there is some other um, issues going on with the cinder blocks decaying, it, it's it's not in imminent danger that it's going to fall down tomorrow. Ten years. Is it going to be here and it's structurally sound in, in fifteen to twenty five years? Maybe not, but at the same point in time. It's something that's yeah. in, in front of us right now, and we got to handle it. And then needs a roof. No, it needs to be. It needs a roof, so let's put a roof on it. Yeah, yeah, no, I just yeah. make it right. Start the plan according to the other side. Yeah, I've been planning that for years. Maybe straight out. Nope, nope. Maybe it's not a new field of building. You know, there's just a new field of building. Let's go to the building. Yep. Any other All thoughts? Right. Thank any you, other Keith. Thoughts? Keith. Thank you, Keith. Right. Um, if you have any questions, we'll go to Brian. We'll get back. Um, Brian, do you have anything? Next meeting is 27th at schools. 27th at the at schools. schools. School. So whatever one we were going to have is. Yeah, I yeah, just shifted. Okay. Next one back. At, so. at the school. You said? No, I thought somebody just said out no. school. The school, school. The schools will be here. Yeah, yeah. schools are coming in. And we will have the bright lights ready. For sure. the and we will. And we will. If they give off some heat, that'd be good. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Mo motion to adjourn? I make yeah. a motion to adjourn. Whoops. We're adjourned. Oh, I thought you